Yeah, I miss sleeping. I miss sleeping. <laughs> Dude, that nap yesterday was... <laughs> but here's the thing, right? <clears throat> As you get older, you wake up more often because your bladder gets weaker. <clears throat> <laughs> I hear this thing. I haven't had that challenge yet. I just wake up more often because of the baby, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I wake up. And what I try to do is stop drinking any kind of liquids. I, I just drink water at home. Uh, any liquid around four or five. But Monday or Tuesday, I went to a, a networking engagement and I was drinking iced tea and water. And then I got home around 1030 and I went back. I, I crashed easy. But when I then I woke up because my body was full of fluid and you know I had to take care of business. And, and then I can't go back to sleep. So now I have earphones and an iPad and I watch like boring doc documentaries to get me to sleep because I have the tinnitus from being a mortar man and I have, you know, old man insomnia and it's never easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, when was the last time you had a full eight hours? I don't know. And now the other problem is now that I have kids, this is still kind of newer to me, although my son's going to be three in Mar or April. Um, when I'm not home, like I go do some army stuff. I don't sleep comfortable because I'm not home now. <laughs> Where before I was never a problem. I'll sleep wherever I, wherever I, but I'm not home, so it's like it's weird. And so you should be taking full advantage of that. I, sh I should be, man. But like I, then I can't sleep right because I'm used to being woken up, and so I don't sleep through the night. I'm like I'm, I'm thinking like I don't know. It's just odd. It's a strange place to be for me, and uh, and it's and it's awesome in its own way. However, I do miss sleep because. Uh, yeah, sleep's good. Sleep's fun. I like sleep, and <laughs> I want more of it in my life. One day you should take your your wife. What's her name? Diana. Diana. You should take Diana, drop off the kids at the parents' house, whatever parent you have, and just go get a hotel room and sleep. That sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because she she got like this little dating game. Like that little card thing, like, oh, you know, you scratch this and this is the date. I was like, I, was like, I, I want sleep. <laughs> yeah. Probably that. Like, you said, when are we going to do these things? Like, when do you plan on, you know, like, when, when, <laughs> these two little kids, when, when do you think they're going to let us do stuff? Anyways, but, I was, but that's exactly what I told her. I was like, you know what's a fun date for me right now? Let's go get, a, let's drop the kids off. Let's go get a hotel room and then sleep. <laughs> it was yeah. so funny you said that. That's kind of why I do this Carmel thing every, well, not every, I try to do it every Friday, but you know, cause you're in real estate, you, you get to make your own hours and typically Friday mornings are really dead. So I take my dogs there and I just Where? go walk up and down the beach to Carmel by the sea. Oh, nice. And it's off leash for the dogs as long as they're in control and I get grounded, I get relaxed and it's my time, right? Yeah. I, I totally just enjoy it is yeah yeah so you know that's that's the one thing but my kids are older they don't need me anymore unless they need me to take them to gymnastics or wherever but like two of them drive well one's out of the house the other one drives and then the other one just got her permit so now we're spending time and I should be enjoying it because it's the last one of my life that I get to do is teach her how to drive, right? So, yeah. yeah, one of the last things you do as a parent is teaching your child how to drive. And then they're pretty much, you're pretty much on the mentor mentee stage, not the parenting stage. So, you know, you can't paddle their ass or ground them or anything because it's just kind of useless. You can threaten them with their lives. With their lives, yes. I I brought you in. I'll kill you. I'll take you out. I'll take you out. <laughs> yeah, all things to look forward to, I suppose. Yeah. So, how often do you do you do you call it drill? Is that what you call it when you go to the army? So about ten years ago, I don't know. I mean, it's probably more than that. Some buddy somewhere. The simple answer to the question is yes. When I first joined the reserve, it was drill it was drill for the longest and then at some point somebody decided that that was no longer an appropriate appropriate term and that was not what it's going to be called so 
from henceforward it shall be called battle assembly <laughs> so <it's gonna laughs> <be> called... <laughs> uh, of course um i can always tell like who's new who's newer and who's not because I, i'll stay drilled i just have a habit like that's what i know it as and uh you know the youngster will call it battle or ba you know ba battle assembly. badass bad battle. attitude battle assembly we will assemble for battle anyways uh yeah it's typically once a month sometimes it's a little longer i was just i was just up there for uh i was right down the street from you for from uh november 28th to the second i think it was something like that. Uh -huh. yeah 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 but i was actually there a couple days longer i was seeing i had to see some some folks there in town you know. what, what do you where is it on heading is it that uh no it's over there mountain view it's actually no oh. it's not it's not right down the street from you but uh okay Oh, it's just a Mountain View a couple days ago. Yeah. Speaking of Mountain View, so I got something. It's really lines up with what you want to talk about too on the uh, housing stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Can you share your screen? Yeah. Go ahead. Let me bring this up. So yeah. So folks at home, if you're if the reason why you're on is because we're talking about this legislation that's being pushed through. Well, let's I talk, know it's, go let's ahead. Talk about the legislation. Let's let's go there first. Yeah. So what they're doing right now is trying to get the hedge funds who buy real estate, single family homes, to not buy single family homes because it's taking away from from home buyers from the real reason why we have homes right the single family home is the american dream people want to buy a house live in it pay it off raise their children in it make memories have some financial stability and hedge funds are coming in and buying swaths of it at a time now they're not doing it across the nation they're doing it in certain metropolitan areas like phoenix and i don't know albuquerque and wherever <clears throat> And they say that it takes up, it's only 3% of the houses that are owned right now. But that's still pretty large. When you that's think a, about it. That's a huge amount. I mean, to say only 3% is crazy. Like, as if that's like nothing. Well, know? that's not the, that's the homes that are available. So let's just say that there's 30 million, say 35 million homes in America. That's 3% of that. But... <clears throat> Only a few homes become for sale or come up for sale every year. Right. And what typically happens is uh, you put it up on market and then you wait for uh, the, the the offers to come in. And typically these hedge funds have billions of dollars, so they don't care if they overpay for it and they'll, they'll overpay for it. Like, for example, I just sold Inman a couple of days ago. Yesterday we wanted to contract. Two days ago we wanted to contract. Listed it at one seven. This thing under eight hundred or under a thousand square feet. So I want to say like nine eighty three for my memory. Nine hundred eighty three square feet. Everything needs to be replaced. Just old single. Uh, <clears throat> so one car garage that was converted. It has a bonus room in the back that they converted from a screen room into a living room. Uh, you know, just not the best house. Listed at 700, expecting 750. I had 13 offers and sold it for uh, 835,000. Wow. And it went to a mom and pop investor. I can tell you that right now. I know that, oh, we have, we're a family. I'm like, nah, you're full of crap. Because when you see houses, when you see all the offers come through, all 13 of them come through and they're all popping in around seven to 770, 780. And then all of a sudden there's one that's just above and beyond. I mean, yeah. So, and obviously I negotiated it up a bit, but that's my job to do, to do that. Sure. <clears throat> but I don't think it was, a, I think it was a mom and pop investor. And I, I saw a graph a couple of days ago and I was trying to look for it real quick before you popped on, but there's only like 3% of the in, uh, investors that are out there that are actually institutional or at least that are categorized that way. And then like 75 or 80% of them are mom and pop, which means they own one to 10 units. And that's now the American dream, right? You wanna be able to buy your house 
fix it up, buy another house, move into that, rent this other one out, have somebody else pay off your mortgage. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, but I don't think that's the problem. I think the real problem is legislation should not be pushed. Well, I mean, <clears throat> it should be about curtailing hedge funds from buying property. I agree yeah, with that. There's, there's a lot to unpack there. I, I think, well, first, just kind of going back to where we first started the conversation. So sleep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, investing in or real estate investing for um, a lot of people has been out of, or it's not really easy for them to do. They don't have, how do I want to say this? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, you know, they don't have the hundred thousands of dollars. So on one hand, there is a a problem that something like a real estate investment trust you know, provides a solution to, where a mom and pop investor, a retiree, or um, you know somebody saving for retirement can participate in real estate investing without that risk of directly owning or without the capital they might need to do so by putting some money aside into a real estate investment trust. And there's, you know, there's all kinds of different kinds of real estate investment trusts from commercial to industrial to office space specific to uh, data center. I mean, it, it goes on and on how diversified and how specific you can get into when it comes to these different types of real estate investment trusts. Um, However, uh, I think what's changed over the last 10 to 15 years, what, and you can kind of track this with the rise of, I'd say, internet and social media and how easier it is for people to access information, right? Uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons why you've seen a rise in um, more people buying multiple homes to try to get to those 10 homes. They can, I think 10 is a number you, you can max at for a certain type of loan, right? After you have 10 of these, 10 of certain loans, you have to get something different kind of getting off off the off the uh the subject a little bit but i think i think that's a thing i'm not sure that's more your lane than mine yeah, um, that's, that's something we can ask scott but i think i think you have to go to more of a commercial loan right right i think you can only get once you get to 10 you get if you have 10 i think it's nine or 10 loans and then your financing starts to look different anyways um but i think you i think that's a, a very clear uh, you can track that i should say i think the rise of those types of mom and pop investors with uh, the rise in, I mean, podcasts, YouTube, all that stuff, right? It just people get more information and, and generally, you know, we've gotten wealthier as a nation, at least a certain class of people has. So people have been doing that. And then you have this other part where uh, large institutions like BlackRock, Vanguard, BlackRock being a, a big, a big player here where they're creating funds that, uh, uh, that's hoovering up, you know, large uh, amounts of of single family residences, just like you you pointed out. And there's nothing like those funds don't usually get smaller, right? They they grow, <laughs> right? So you have these institutional funds that are out seeking ways to grow and create return, and um, and so, yeah, just like you said, you know, they come in over the top with cash. And of course, like, you know, who's going to say no to a higher offer? And so they're buying up homes like crazy. Yep. Absolutely. But there's yeah. a danger into that. We talked danger. about it yesterday, right? Yeah. And you, you know what? I had not thought that far into it, frankly. I thought that was a, a, an amazing point. For me, it, it, what I thought the, the major problem was the affordability here. Like, wow, this is this is creating this is it may not be the only reason however i'm sure there's other factors we can talk about when it comes to creating afford the affordability problem uh when it comes to buying your a home um however this is certainly to me part of the problem right having large institutions like a like a black rock like a vanguard or whoever um coming in and buying just outright buying whole communities in some in some places um i think this happened in florida i was reading an article about this yeah there was a place where there was a, a new home development and they stopped selling houses because the market right. turned this was last year and blackrock came in and sucked Scooped them all up, up. 
So and it's not just BlackRock, right? And we can't no, see it's not. just, yeah, no. multiple. It's multiple an industry times. thing. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it was like, okay, this is creating an affordability problem. Of course, you know, okay, we're turning, you know, long, it's long been part of the national lore, buying your, you know, buying the home, part of the American dream, owning real estate. And then this is a, this is a challenge though, because if we just scale this out and move forward, like, where does this go? Where does this end? And uh, it's going to create problems for people to be able to buy homes. It's, 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 it's just, there's a lot of problems there. But, However, I mean, you brought it, a great point. And if you want to go into that. Yeah. It's a, and it, it happens to big corporations too. Like I can, I can remember watching Hewlett Packard grow up so large by not just by creating new products because Hewlett Packard started off <clears throat> in the test industry. Right. And then they went into the computer industry and then they went into the printers and then they did this and then they did that. And by, by and large, what they did is they started growing so excessively large that they, their stockholders were demanding better returns every year. So what they would do is they would start buying other companies. Right. Right. They had the money, they had the, the extra liquid assets and they, transferred over and they would buy printer companies and their competitors and they squashed everything. And then it got so big that they had to split up. So Hewlett Packard, the original name just did uh, computers and printers and the other ancillary products that fell in line with that. And then they, they scooted their test. The original product that they sold was test measurement. They, they scooted it over to a company called Agilent which is fantastic. But then they started having growing pains because the market turned just like every industry you have. It's cyclical. You can be in, in the chip business. You can be in the aerospace business. You can be in the housing business. You can be in the automotive business. It's all cyclical. And when you're in a growth pattern and you have to grow and you have to grow and you have to grow and the market turns on you, your stocks are going to shrink because you're going to not fulfill the requirements that your stock and stakeholders demand yeah. increased value of your stocks. Right? right. So what happens, your stock becomes lower and people start losing money. And that, what that was the dot com thing in the 2000 early two thousands. And in a way is the same thing that happened in 2008, uh, except for that was just unethical, completely illegal, but it was swept under the rug. Yeah. But what we're seeing today, and it's illegal. And if you look through the, the newscasts right now, there's a few people talking about it. This is a Ponzi scheme. And, and people are, are buying into this, expecting heavy, heavy returns. They're like, oh, I'll just put my $100,000 retirement into, into BlackRock because they're going to buy this stuff and it's going to continue to go up. And if and when the market collapses, because we don't know if it's going to, Right. You don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball, but things are cyclical. Things what are happens cyclical. if they put it in there? They're betting not, this thing's going to turn it. Their hundred thousand dollar investment is going to turn into a couple million dollars over a couple of years. And all of a sudden it's worth twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, it kind of screws people over. It's the same thing that happened in 2008. Totally. And not only that, just just the doubling down on what you're what you're talking about here. How wise is it to have such an important asset? like real estate particularly single family homes which is just core kind of the social fabric right of our of our communities and country yep. if you will, for families to be able to afford that i don't know how wise that is for it for so much that to get concentrated in big institutions who are uh who are beholden to shareholders companies beholden to shareholders have a track record of making decisions and choices just like you said to try to uh honor Right, their commitment to those shareholders and to make sure that share price is, is, is still rising, which leads to that's their job. That's to, the whole right, reason for can, being right. Yeah, it can, and it could lead to some ethical dilemmas where they make uh, decisions which ultimately blow up. Right. And, and cause huge problems. So, yep. yeah. Now, there's there's been there's a counter argument there that some folks have have made that, well, the, the they they would point out that these institutions are are providing value on one end to share to investors who otherwise can buy real estate we talked about that also they are they are uh 
purchasing homes and making sure that they are kept upright. You won't have a problem with a landlord who isn't, you know, uh, I guess, what's the term? Oh, deadbeat landlord, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, so that's be a term. That's for a, sure. <laughs> so, you know, then there's that argument. There's also uh, an argument out there. So this is more about the challenge with um, not enough new homes being built. And therefore, if these institutions can keep doing this, it gives a signal demand to builders so that they will build more homes, which will therefore increase affordability. So um, I don't know if I buy into all that. I can, I can definitely see how some of that could be true. Uh, however, all things being equal or not equal, either way, I still think, uh, given the choice, I would not want to have large institutions um, using so much of their Power. investors' money yeah. to buy so many single-family homes. It's just um, it's kind of getting a little out of hand, is all I would say. Yeah, I mean, you're In losing. My, you're going to lose. The personal touch right there's right. no concierge service there's no person you're going to talk to i went to i can't remember the name of the company but they're all across the united states and maybe i sent it to you on text so i'll go dig it through while you talk text but their whole purpose is to buy it and rent it out to you which is horrible if you're going to be a renter rent an apartment rent a townhouse or whatever i get it but the home should be should be maintained and and they should be owned by human beings, not not corporations. Which you know, and there's a dilemma here. You know, I think uh, segue into the legislation you're talking about. Like, there's a dilemma here on, in my opinion, on like we're a capitalist economy, right? That's the system we have. Yeah. And so, um, how do you balance that out when it comes to what a co corporation can or cannot do in a marketplace? Um, so I can see there'd be some challenges there. And that's why I, I'd be surprised if this legislation pushes through. I think it's great headline. It's a great effort. I wonder how much of it has to do. And just reading from the what I what I was able to read about it, how much of it has to do with you know, certain members of either the House or Congress who want to, uh, or Congress will say, um, you know, by, by putting forth legislation they know won't pass, they can say they put effort in, right? And so it looks good for them. However, it achieves nothing. So, that, and that's that's exactly what this housing wire. I can share it with you real quick. This housing wire uh, article. It's the likelihood of passage is low, right? I mean, no matter how hard we try, capitalism is going to win over. And whether you're a capitalist or a communist or whichever, Mark, I don't care. This is a ca capitalist society. That's how it's run. That's the engine that runs this country. There's going to be, uh, what are the, not the pork barrelers, the guys that are in Congress that pay off the Congress, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, lobbyists. They're going to have lobbyists lobby against this because it's not in their best, their best interests of their stockholders. Right? I get it. I mean, it's so they're probably they're probably doing this to get a few people to talk about it, and. I'm neither Democrat or Republican. I see this as a valuable tool for us to at least realize that maybe this is not the smartest thing for people to do or to for comp corporations to do as a as a, an investment vehicle because there's yeah. so many different things. You could buy airports. You could buy airplanes. You can buy storage. There's a huge industry in storage, right? Why pick on why pick on the um the single family house. Yeah. Yeah. By apartments. I, I, and there, and there's definitely reach for all that stuff. And uh, I'm not, even, I, I don't say, I'm not saying that the, these corporations should have the ability to, should be barred from being able to do this. I just think the scale is ridiculous and uh, it's not going to get smaller. It's going to keep growing. And you, you're talking about international investors now. So you have people from around the world investing here, right? Because of our, our, the safety and, and the deepness of our markets and i just don't know how great it is to have whole communities in 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 in, in our communities i'm sorry whole communities in our country that's like a our sleep. own, <laughs> our own by, that's parents uh, sleep for you right there yeah you ain't lying man that's that's for real right there <laughs> last night was a good one but anyways uh you know owning uh such 
such important parts of, of, of what our country stands for. So, yeah, I think it's a problem for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So, and, and who are the major owners of these stocks of these black fund, black hedge, black whatever, and vanguards and open I mean, a lot of it, they're, they're multi billionaires, right? That, but it's not just the head, it's not just hedge funds, though. It's not just like, although it's, that's a big piece of it, but uh, also a big piece of this is pension holders. Mm -hmm. you know, pension state state run pensions um th these pensions uh uh who who are in dire need of return because of the commitments they have to pensioners uh right they they're, they're constantly seeking ways to to grow that pot of money and so um I keep saying blackrock but they deserve they deserve to be mentioned because of how big they are and how much um influence they have in these things and when they target something and they pour you know, billions of money into things, uh, um, it, it's like a gravitational pull for these other companies to do to do the same, if you will. And then, but they have so much money and so much leverage, just like they kind of push out even smaller players. So, uh, um, yeah. So, right. I don't have actually a problem keep saying their name, but anyways. <laughs> But every time we say it, we go up in SEO rankings. So that's good. Yeah. We like that. <laughs> <laughs> BlackRock, hedge fund. You see my cease and desist order from uh, <laughs> Vanguard, open door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. No, they're, they're up there too. For yeah. sure. I mean, there's there's hundreds of them out there. And yeah. you look at the holdings. A lot of them have certain funds that only focus on real estate. And some only focus on companies. And some only focus on financial instruments, what have you, I get it. It's, it's, it is what it is. That's more your ballywick. I understand, I understand you have to spread load, but having a REIT or a cartel, is that what they're called? No cartel, uh, REIT that develops. It, this is basically a cartel of a Ponzi scheme is what it is. It's a, an oligarchy of people that are in, that have swaths of energy, of, of power and money, buying up stuff, keeping it away from people that can't afford to live anywhere. People are having struggles living anywhere today because you're know, like, oh, I could just move from California to Arkansas. Well, if you move to Arkansas, your minimum wage isn't going to be twenty dollars an hour anymore. It's going to be seven dollars an hour. Yeah, because it reflects the cost of living in a minimum way, and now because of inflation. You're still paying more money for everything, That's gas, right. food, etc., diapers. I was going to mention the um, the other thing that came up for me, or reminded me uh, that's a problem as well. And here, I'll share this here. In a, where is is it? that diapers? Diapers are a problem, man. Because God, Lee, you know what I need to buy? I need to buy shares in a diaper company because. Goodness gracious. Yes. Anyways. Uh, Actually, I heard the U.S. population is shrinking now. Is it? Oh. Yeah. I haven't heard that. I know, we're, I know we're, the average age is getting older, but no, I, I haven't seen that that, uh, <clears throat> that, is, that is shrinking. It's, it's getting older because uh, your, your generation and lower are choosing not to have as many children. That's right. right? We're 1.7. And you're like 1.5, and my kids' generation is going to be like 0.9. So we're going to have a lot less population, which is one of the arguments that builders are having. And if you go back into some of these uh, these articles that I, I shared, you'll see that it's it's a combination of things, right? There's lack of supply. There's lack of supply. There's uh, the the low rates that we had two years ago. There's there's people that are paying off their houses and choosing to stay there instead of going into uh, retirement communities. But also builders are just not building as much. We haven't built yeah, as many houses as we needed to over the last 20 years compared to what our, our projected growth. Yep. So uh, that's putting upward pressure on pricing, making everything more less affordable. No, that's right. I mean, that, that's that, that is definitely part of the problem. And like I said, that's what some of the people, the counter argument to, to those who are in favor of the, of this, of these, uh, of this investment strategy 
for these hedge funds and REITs to, to do so is because it applies pressure to the problem and it signals the home builders to keep building, right? Or to build right. more. So, um, you know, that, that's what they would say. The other thing I was, I was going to bring up, and this is right in your neighborhood, is some of this article, what, what this article talks about is the this phenomenon where a lot of these large comp tech companies, a few in particular, uh, in this article, they talk about Facebook and... Uh, uh, Scroll up a bit. There you go. Google and uh, Tesla. That they're building their own communities. Yep. And one, this one, this one they're talking about North Bay Shore master proposed development in Mountain View. So it's just an interesting thing in that <laughs> we, we've seen this before. Where have we seen large, powerful U.S. companies build company towns for their workers? It's happened before, right? A Ford Detroit. did it. The coal mine, the coal mining industry did it. Yep. Uh, and guess what? Those were all disasters. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to be like that. However, you know, history does this rhyme a little bit. Like, how much more power do you want to give your employer over you? Now they have your job. Now they have your house. Like yep. now you're renting from them too. <laughs> like, come on. Like, how crazy is that? And you tell me, Vito, if a development this size goes to um one owner essentially what could that possibly do to the availability of, of homes everywhere else it's got to go down right like how does this help the problem it doesn't it, uh, it, it helps that's cool oh, i think you dropped either i dropped off or you dropped off can you not hear me? Oh, there you go. Now I got you. Yeah. So they, you know, the t we're doing, we're trying to do that for teachers. So because we're not willing to pay them the going rate to live here in Silicon Valley, we're trying to build houses for teachers. So I see this as it's okay, except for to what end? When does it going to? Because when you go to work for Google, they give you lunch, they give you dinner, they give you breakfast, they give you everything you need. To live there there's exercise there's dry cleaning there's i mean this basically they want you to live for the company yeah yeah no so you become totally. almost like an indentured servant there i mean exactly or a very well paid servant yeah it's not compared to these the coal mining the coal mine towns of you know the the turn of the century or or uh, or anything like that it's definitely a lot better than that for sure yeah. uh, however it's just it's just to me it's just an increase it's an increasing or the power differential between employer and employee in this situation, man, is huge. Like, oh my gosh. Well, they definitely rope you in a little bit tighter saying, hey, if you're going to work for us, we're going to make you work 12, 15 hour days. That's right. That's right. Oh, and guess what? Now that since we own the house, um, no, you can't work from home because you're right down the street from yeah. nice quarter. You're, you're coming in. Get, get in your right. Google Lime scooter and scoot your butt yeah, over yeah, to the yeah. office. <laughs> right now on one side it's like yeah it's great i guess you know these communities are probably kept very clean very tight very nice well and everything will be kept up pretty well uh I, I, however if you're not one of these employees you're not going to live in that community are you you know that that, that community isn't open to you is, is my guess right you're not allowed to live there i could so. see step something like a twilight zone where this kind of combines with stepford stepford wives where you know all the wives stay at home and then they get kind of programmed from elon's chip to be you know uh, you know the perfect wife and they all have this little crux and then there's this little commune yeah you know and then things go awry so who knows yeah yeah so i think there's potential for for that to get out of hand um and we'll see that how that goes and i think disney is also mentioned in there so you, you think but think of any large corporation um to, of that size and they're all thinking about building and owning uh communities like this for their employees so pretty wild man i just i trip out in that and so if you're not some high paid tech employee i guess you know you're you'll be renting for life because um all you have is a house from blackrock that you can rent from i have a uh you know uh wayne my buddy who does bought the pool service business yeah <clears throat> he uh he services a, he's servicing a pool right now where a couple bought the house next door, the one with the pool issue, so they can move into it for a year while their other 12,000, 13,000 square foot house gets refurbished. 
So yeah. it's something like this. So the, the whole crux and value of what real estate allows you to do is build value to your estate, to your legacy plan, to living, not living. If you're a renter, which I know a lot of people are renters and they want to become homeowners because they understand it. One, you become economically locked into that house. I have a thumbs up. What the hell was that? <laughs> Put my thumb away. One, you get the, uh, economically locked into that house. We bought this house around $600,000. It's worth twice that now. <clears throat> but we had a certain payment. That payment didn't go up or down. Now, in California, we have Proposition 13 where our price, our property tax only goes up 2% max every year. Whereas if you lived in Nevada or Texas and your price doubles, your taxes double up until a certain point. And then you get something like a homestead rule in certain states. <clears throat> so we got, we, we live very comfortably after the first five years after the first five years were a struggle but then we got into a point where we started making more money we got more leveled off on managing our money right not living extravagantly me being more disciplined with my money spend <laughs> <laughs> and we got economically locked into that payment when you rent your rent goes up erroneously every year it yeah. goes up no matter what five percent max every year in california right that's right. Whereas in your, you know, the fixed payment of your mortgage is, I mean, really it gets cheaper over time. Right. Where yeah. like in a Googleplex where you buy or rent a house like that, they're going to rent the house. They might not rent it, increase the, the rent to you every year. There might be something you negotiate, but once you move out, that rent goes back up to market rate. So definitely yeah. it's a plus for, it's an added advantage to Google 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 stockholders it's a small advantage for the google employee yeah and it also goes back to something you mentioned earlier about Hubert packard i think i think is what you mentioned like you know i i don't know if google's core business is real estate right uh i don't know if that's what they should really be focusing on however that's what they're doing it's kind of like it's kind of like that you know companies like this just can't help themselves but start to grow and get into different things it takes some kind of economic of people or a change in the market cycle for them to like, oh, we got to get back to what we were supposed to be focusing on. Right. But, you know, I don't know. But I think that's the natural growth and progression of mega companies, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you have to you have to expand yourself to where wherever the new trends are, where you can capitalize and maximize the the value for your stakeholders and your stockholders. It's it's a common thing, right? Yeah. And you know, I when I did my business degree, I understood that it just totally makes sense. As, as angry as you can be about it is that every corporation is like that. When you become yeah. a mega corporation, that's the main purpose. It's not the product. It's not the customer service. It's not the employees. It's stakeholders and stockholders. That's the massive value. That's right. That's right. And here's, here's the other challenge. to all, all of it is like you're either growing or you're dying. Yep. Right. So there is no stability or in between. It's either growth or decline. And so uh, that just goes right along with what you're saying. And yep. Then you either do that, or if you're in a great position, you buy back some of your stock so that eventually you can put it back on the market when you can sell it for three times what you bought it back for. Yeah. Right. There's all sorts of different ways. And then there's MA and people get compensated really well being in that department as well. And I, I get it. It's just, there's companies that will succeed and be successful. And there's companies that will be pushed to the wayside. Like, you know, IBM was up in from the forties up to the seventies, eighties, eighties. IBM was the key player, a key player. It was a blue ribbon stock, right? They paid dividends. They, they were a very well established company. And then they kind of lost their way because they expanded so hard and so fast and so dis disparate, so spread out and different things that they lost their way. They didn't well, change with the times is enough. Losing the way. I think that could be applied to a lot of things today. And we'll see. I, I think this is something we should check in on 
you know, maybe four or five months from now, see like where, where, where is this all at now? I'm going to start. I, I, I definitely will be tracking this a little bit closer as far as what these large institutional players are, are doing in this specific um, issue, because I just think it's a problem. It's, it's I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. So, you know, like this NAR lawsuit, like, OK, it's not affecting me. I'm still going to do business the way I always did it. And guess what? There's just another piece of paper you have to sign. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But you already had it. We just never really enforced it. But now it's like, if you want me to represent you, you have to sign this document. And that's just a rule. That's my rule. It's not a law. It's not a, my, my, my buyer, my broker is not requiring me to do it. I work, I'm a broker, but I work under a broker. I, I choose to do this because it, it explains explicitly how I'm going to be compensated if I'm representing you as a buyer's agent, which is that's the whole lawsuit. If you want to dig into that, I really don't care to talk about that right now. Cause yeah, I, we think, should say, I, I think there's some important, I think what's the word I want to use there. There's a lot of different, uh, I'll even say misinformation out there about that lawsuit. I don't know. I don't know if you want to get to today, but we should probably talk about that some other time. So just so people understand like, you know, uh, what it is exactly about and how it actually plays out and who it affects. <laughs> it affects the lawyer that gets $400 million out of that whole thing. And yeah, yeah. it's, I mean, it's F you money. And after you boil it down and, and talk about how much the rest of the, the plaintiffs get and divide it by 250,000 plaintiffs, you walk away with $4,000, about $4,000 plus or minus pre-tax. <laughs> so yeah, great. I'm, I'm super happy for that lawyer. <laughs> I mean, what are we going to say? It's a class action lawyer. It's going to make a like a filthy amount of money, $400 million, $600 million. I don't know what it was. And that's, I, it's the funny thing is this whole lawsuits about disclosing how much compensation an agent makes, but there's no disclosure as how much that lawyer is making. That's wild. Wow. I mean, welcome to America, baby. Yeah, uh, but here's the thing: if you're going to do that, then doctors have to disclose how much money they make, how much they're going to charge you up front. Oh, by the way, you have appendicitis, and because I'm a specialist and we have to do all this stuff, here's your quote of how much it's going to cost you, and this is how much I'm going to make out of it. That's what the lawsuit is about. Or like you're selling a car: how much is my salesman going to make? He's going to make, I don't know, 20% off the prop. I don't know, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. But if if we get sued for that, then everybody should have to disclose how much they make off of every deal. Yeah. Like you. How much money do you make? I can't ask you how much you make off of me because it's not a whole lot of money. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean. I don't care. It's not transparency my... is good. Uh, I, it's hard to argue against it. Um, I don't know if they need a form in their lawsuit though, to, to, to do that. But I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, the DOJ tried to change something about five years, four or five years ago on the same co concept. And they walked away from it because they said, no, we don't have really an argument. And then this guy comes up and sues Missouri. Something like 1.6 billion dollars and then they lose and they're appealing the nar is appealing it but it's going to go across the nation now and oh sure yeah, yeah. you know what that meant to me is i had to go through extra hours of training and how to talk about it how to handle it how to prepare for it and how to protect my clients the good and bad about it and it is what it is mm. Um, are we going to be, are we staying on till, uh, as a Scott we're waiting on? Cause there's two folks for me today, right? Or, or what two, are we doing? Do we have two Scots. There's two Scots. I was getting a little confused there. Yeah. Yeah. So folks at home, if you're listening still, probably not, but if you are listening, we have Scott Hill, my, uh, one of my mortgage brokers going to talk about, uh, loans, what the new rates mean, uh, and probably deeply to barely touch a little bit on what the VA loan can do with uh, multi multi units. And on a, so with the VA loan, you can buy one to four unit property. 
right? Anything under the RESPA guidelines. There's a new little known, uh, it's not new, it's been around a long time, but it's very little known. There's a VA loan where two veterans can get together and buy a seven unit apartment, make one of them commercial, and then each of them live in a unit. Wow, I don't think I've, I've ever heard of that. Yeah, nobody talks about it. And I just heard about it on TikTok and I'm like, hey, we got to learn about this. Tell me everything you know. He's like, I don't know anything about it. Let me do Let me do some research. And then uh, Scott Wilson is a Monta Vista Matador. I'm a, I went to Monta Vista. I met him at a class reunion. He's Army, so you guys are going to chum up pretty good. Outstanding. <laughs> and he's a family lawyer and he handles trust. So the oh, whole no idea is... I have some friends, I have a lot of people that have parents that are aging and they're going through processes of handling trusts and how to handle situations when you're trying to get help through Medicare, Medicaid, Medi-Cal, and get help through social work. And that's what we're going to be talking about later on. Awesome. Yeah. lots. Of, I mean, dude, this is stuff that, that's some really deep stuff because, you know, when you're when you get older, you have to start preparing for it. And when you're 60 and you're planning on retiring at 65, you better have your plan completely set up. And it's important for you to know, Patrick, because um, there's certain ways to move money around and assets around so that it makes the person look broke in the eyes of Medicare so that you get assistance. And I have friends that are going through that right now with their parents and they're fairly wealthy. I mean, they're not like, F you wealthy, but they're, they're well off. Uh, but Medicare won't t touch them right now because they're, they have so much money and she's at a point where we can't put her into a home just yet because Medicare isn't taking care of it yet. Yeah. And they didn't do the right steps to do this. So I think that's going to be a, an important discussion for a lot of people, including me, because, you know, my, my mom just turned 80 and Everybody, every every elder per person from every walk of life, rich or poor, should understand strategies on how to use, not abuse Medicare, Medi-Cal to their benefit. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I would get totally behind that. Yeah. And I think so. people are underprepared for, generally speaking, underprepared for how long they'll potentially could live for and how much resources that might involve. Yep. Right. That's just, yep. it's kind of hard to put, wrap your head around that, you know, because we're not really wired that way. And it's a kind of a new phenomenon. It's not, it's kind of a, that's not something that was a problem, you know, a hundred years ago. But about a phenomenon. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's this is a modern problem. I have a conversation over here at the uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, great. It's the candy's kicking in. So it's it's hap I, I see it happening to everybody I know right now because I'm I'm a little bit older than you, just a little bit, but just all of our parents are clear, you are older though, just, just a little bit, yeah. Just really, just <laughs> um, but it's going to happen it, it's not if it happens but count on it happening if it doesn't you are blessed and thank the lord and the universe or whatever god you believe in that it doesn't happen to you but parkinson's um alzheimer's and dementia are taking over a majority of our of our elders and we're not talking about it enough that's right you know, we, we are living longer. Yep. And um, our especially if you're middle or middle to upper class, you know, you, you have some means, you have some resources. It means you've probably eaten a little better, taking care of yourself a little better. So you, you get into your 60s and 70s and pretty much intact. And so there's a, that probability that you'll make it to your 90s and to 100. It's getting higher and higher and higher. The challenge is people are living more feebly, though. They're more, they're living longer, but sicker. Right. So it's not lifespan and health span aren't the same thing. Right. And so um, quality of life, is that what you're talking about? Well, there's your health span, meaning how long you can, how long you're healthy and can do stuff without support. You can still drive. You can still pick things up. You can still take care of yourself. That's not the same thing as lifespan, like how much, how long you're actually alive for. 
Dr. Peter Attila. He has a podcast, which some people can check out. Uh, he, he, he talks a lot about this stuff. He actually has a new book out on this very subject and how to increase your 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 health span, not just your lifespan. Um, it's important, right? I yeah, mean, totally. I mean, who wants to be getting spoon fed and have their diaper changed, right? You want to stave off that stuff for as long as possible. Although some people may want that. I don't know. I just married a younger wife. That's how I covered that base. But um, uh, she's going to age you faster than you know. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I mean, it's true, right? Because I, 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 the more I talk about it, the more I'm not worried about it, the more I'm not even concerned about it because I'm, I'm actively talking about it. I'm, yeah. I'm sharing my questions with you and my trust lawyer and insurance companies and everybody that I can, because the more I talk about it, the more educated I am about it. And I don't have all the answers. That's, that's what this podcast is all about so that we can learn to ask more questions. And the, and the thing is, is there's no perfect answer, right? That's right. And, and people got to keep in mind that, you know, Medicare does not cover, you know, um, assisted living or, or nursing home or, or, or things like that, that Medicare does not cover those things. It so does if, you need... if you're worth less than $2,000. No, I, 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 well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, um push back you on that what do you mean like wh what what do you what do you think it covers so you can even if it's worth less than two thousand dollars you can own a house and then you can have a car and then you can have two thousand dollars in your bank and you can't have any other assets that the medicare can touch if you're less if you're worth oh, right. less i'm sorry you, right 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 um you're you you got me uh that's right that's right right yeah. and then if you have social security coming in that goes to counting your your right qualification score or whatever and if you have uh retirement coming in from say pers cal pers or some other kind of <clears throat> non-401k or ira type union or, or thing that money comes in that's active money for for medicare to take back because it's going to cost them to provide for you right, right? so what that does is it takes away from your your um your family's inheritance it takes care of your well-being it takes care of yeah. everything but you're living like a pauper because until you are not worth until you're worth two thousand dollars cash of all assets then um, then they're not going to help you. That's what's happening to my friend's mom right now. She has Parkinson's and dementia, and she's in a, a hospital right now. And I asked him to step up and, and talk about these woes because he's encountering roadblocks that maybe somebody that's listening can, can help offer. Because, dude, I don't have these answers. I'm not a, a senior healthcare specialist or, or social security specialist, but all that money that comes in goes to gets funneled right to Medicare. So what that does is if it, it sucks out all the work that you've done, all the money that you've saved up over the years uh, for retirement, because you have dementia now, you have to become a ward of the state. So all that money goes towards paying for long-term disability, a rest home or now nursing facilities, healthcare professionals. And once you're broke, then the state will take over. Now, and so you're talking about more like, I think that's more Medicaid though, I think, right? I don't think medic, I'm pretty sure Medicare does not cover long-term care. Like if you got to get admitted somewhere and you need help because you can no longer take care of yourself uh, past like 20, 30 days, like I'm pretty sure they don't, they will not pay for that, but like, that must be a Medicaid thing. But anyways, maybe that's something Scott can, can, can speak to a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's the law. I mean, it's, it's the long-term care conundrum that we're, we're sure. faced to talk about right now, because I mean, you have a few more years to work before you're retired and then you're going to get old. And the last thing you want is for your children to have to take care of you. Well, think about it though. Uh, you just mentioned it earlier. I think you said you believe that the, the population is shrinking. I don't think it is. But I don't know. I haven't researched it. But I, I thought we were still getting enough immigration to keep pushing the uh, total body count in the country higher. Although we're getting older still, uh, on average, uh, the average age I think is getting closer. Isn't I think it's birth rates that I was talking about, not not immigration. 
Say again. <laughs> I think it was birth rates, not immigration. Oh, oh yeah, birth, no, birth rates for sure are going down, but uh, total population is still increasing. Um, however, uh, you're, you're getting the rise of couples who uh, don't have kids, and so um, they will be wards of the state because if they don't have a plan, right? Because what they got, there's no kid there to do it. So um, yeah, I don't know. I know it's crazy, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Imagine being high powered dink, dual income, no children. There you go. That's that. That is a thing. That's right. That's right. It that's is. And that's become renting from uh, Google and Facebook. Yeah. And it's not. It's not just dual incomes either anymore. It's single parent people. People are choosing to stay single. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that, right? I mean, it's just part of life. There's it ebbs and flows, and right now people just choose to not deal with the insanity of living with another person. Sometimes. <laughs> your, your mind's like, <laughs> what's, what's he talking about? No, it's just yeah. something that, you know, it's just a thing. So uh, I think we're going to see a fad of if they start building, we're going to see uh, one and two bedroom houses become more popular again because having families is going out of style. Not on the whole, on a certain percentage. It's definitely a demographic now. Yeah. So. And we'll see. Things have a ways of turning around. Uh, you, you could very well see uh, the newest generation mm -hmm. arriving in America as babies will grow up wanting to have five kids again. We'll see what happens here. Uh, what do you want to do? Are we keeping recording until or how did, or what are we doing here? Yeah, we can keep recording. I think I have it set up so that uh, when, when Scott say he's going to be on 3.30? 3.30? Yeah. Let me, let me text him and find out. Oh, there he is. Yeah, so I, I, I'm curious what uh, the lawyer might have some input. We should probably have somebody on who could specialize and speak exactly to this Medicare versus Medicaid in the state of California. Because it it's not the same in every state. I know it changes from state to state. Um, but generally speaking, it's a lot of the implications are the same. Um, my understanding is you're right. But, but however, if you show yourself as that poor to the state and they're going to provide services, I'm not sure what Medicaid will do for your care in home. If you want to stay in home, I'm sure they will do something. Um, I, however, uh, if you get needed a facility and you want the state to pay for it, you're going to a state facility. And I don't know if somebody would want that if they have the assets. Yeah. So I'm hearing a lot of different chatters about having a, a, family trust and within that trust you own an llc that owns all the assets mm -hmm. which <clears throat> i don't know i mean possibly. I, can, I, I can see a lot how that can help a lot of things however if if it comes down to the situation where you need to be in a facility and you want the state to pay for it because you want to shield your assets um, you're going to a state facility. I don't know if you have the assets, you'd want to go to a state facility. You probably want to go to a private facility. I'm not talking about billionaires and hundred millionaires. I'm talking about people that live comfortably. Yeah, me too. I'm, talk I'm talking about those people too. I, um, um, I think with proper planning, you could, you could choose your facility. And if you wait till you're 70, yeah, it's probably too late to plan for that. You That's know? why we're talking about it now. So I get right. a little bit, let me, uh, let me, I'm going to go on mute real quick. Okay. Call Scott. And well, uh, wow, Vito Almighty is doing that. Uh, for those of you who are still listening, because there's nobody listening, I'm sure. Um, I will say, and I'll chop this up and I'll provide it later. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but I listened to this amazing podcast on it. It's totally unrelated, but it's kind of related. And it's really cool. It's an it's it's a it's long, but man, it's an incredible part of American history that you will get engrossed in, and you will be surprised by how bloody and incredibly violent this little piece of American history is. And it is the coal miners' uh, uprising that happened. Um, oh, I guess I want to say uh, what was the years? It was like the early 1900s, essentially. Um, and uh, uh, it's out in 
you know, like by God, West Virginia and around them parts, all them coal mining hills. And it's just an amazing, amazing, crazy little piece of American history. And you'd be amazed at how organized these guys got and and how big uh, their march and their these brigade level uh, organization that organization organization that they did with each other because a lot of these guys were were World War One vets and stuff and uh, um, it's just pretty amazing. Anyways, uh, Martyr Made Podcast is the name of the podcast and he put some amazing stuff out. And the episode is you know Who's America? I think it's called Who's America. Yeah, Who's America? Um, anyways, I'll put a link maybe in the whenever we post it so people check it out if they want. All right, Scott. Scott will be here in a few seconds. Oh, I'm cool. going to jump off real quick and take my sweater off because it's boiling hot in here. All right. Got my sauna going. We want to just pause. Okay. There he is. Welcome, Scott. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? I think he's, he's still, uh, um, I can hear you, Vito. I think he's just, he's still working as, working as. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, guys? I can hear you. Yep. I can't hear you. Well, that's because you don't have your earphones on, man. I can hear you. He's did a speaker test as it's working. Can you hear us now? I can hear you. I can hear your ding dong. <laughs> he probably needs to make sure that speaker is attached on the, um, what did I have to do? I'm trying to remember here now. I don't, it's a PC thing. You're going to have to tell him how to do it on PC. He has to click on that mute button little arrow and just make sure the right speaker is attached. You might need to call them or something. <clears throat> Do you want to call, call them? Test, test, test. I can hear you. I don't know if he'll answer if I call him, though. <laughs> he doesn't know who I am. Let me text him. Uh, which number is he? He is... Uh, 408 898 0100. Oh, okay. Right hey, I just ran a test on my speaker and it works fine. Um, uh, is, your, is your, um, no, is your, is your system speaker working? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was just on a webinar just an hour ago and then i just tested my speaker it's working perfectly um let me uh real quick let's see here uh, so do you see the little microphone yep hit yep so watch hit the watch listen here's test speaker listen okay he's testing speaker that's strange yeah, that's, uh, yeah but if you hit that little down arrow to the right of the mute yeah button you're gonna see uh Audio output speaker. Uh, okay. Yep. You see? Okay. Yep. 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 It. You know what it did? It, it's your system. I. I never on this platform, and so it's that it defaults every time I get on your platform and changes everything I have set up for Zoom and <laughs> webinar. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's see. All right. Go ahead and talk. Let's hear you now. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, you're great. It kicks me out. Your 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 thing kicks me out of my speaker working every time. All right, we're all good. Scott Hill, welcome back to our show. Patrick, have you two ever met? I don't think so. No. I met you, Patrick. Nice to meet you, bud. Yeah, right back at you, man. Yeah, yeah. sorry, we had some technical difficulties. It's always Vito's fault. Always every Vito's time. Fault. Blame it Vito on thinks he's very special and fancy schmancy with, yeah. with his gear and stuff. And oh yeah, which his nose up at us, you know, uh 
regular computer users. I, I'm, I'm surprised he doesn't have like background singers and everything already. So that comes know. in post production. Yeah. Post production. There you go. I'll, I'll let you guys talk for a little bit. We're recording right now, uh, but let me, I need to get some more water. Hang on. And Scott, uh, yes, sir. Do I have it right that you were you used to be in the army at one at some point? That is sacrilegious. No, I was in the navy. Navy, navy. I was in well, the navy. Yeah, this was clear. Army did beat navy uh, on yeah. Saturday. They did. I, I think. I think the navy just was, uh, you know, feeling bad for army and and, and what those guys clearly. have to go through those grunts. Yeah. So. Um, you know, get, we throw a bone every once in a while and that's there what we did go. in 2023. We'll get them next year. Clearly. clearly. <laughs> yeah. Right I was, I was Navy. Now, was it you that you were, you were in the army, right? Yeah. I'm still in, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, drilling reservist. Like my, hey. in my 20, I think I'm in my, and next March will be my, be my 27th year. I think. That's awesome. Thank you for what? your long service. Oh, right on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 27 you years. Me? Yeah. Dude, you were just saying you're like 28 years old. Well, no, I look 28 years old. At least that's how I started looking. No, I think I what, you, what I was saying is you look like you aged 28 since you've had I've kids. I've aged during this, this broadcast. That's, what's happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it's, uh, I, like the narrow, I like the narrow frames of the video. It cuts off any uh, holiday, uh, you know, extra eatings oh there we go okay yeah, there we go <laughs> there we go good deal i can make you the main guy when you're talking now fantastic so this is the first time no you and i've talked scott you and i've talked about talked on this before right on which which specific topic on this platform yes yeah just chatting about loans and what's going on and yes many times yep we have and Scott, so uh, I'm I'm not quite clear on exactly what it is you do. If you could just like, yeah, I uh, I put people in debt. I am a uh, I'm a loan officer. <laughs> I uh, own a mortgage company, and um, yeah, so I help people finance their homes. And oh, right. uh, that's my joke is that I put people in debt, but it's the best debt you're ever going to get. Leverages your wealth, changes lives, um, and uh, enjoy doing it. I've been doing it 26 years now. Oh, awesome! Is yeah, there, is there uh, like a I don't want to say in general purpose what came up for me like do you have like a target market or, or you kind of just help wherever like how does that how does that work for you so uh, i mean it's home buyers i mean I'm, I'm i'm more in residential lending right so i kind of do the gamut as a broker okay. um you know everything from your conventional loans to your you know your jumbo loans your government loans you know we do reverse mortgages um you know home equity lines of credit we pretty much do everything that's kind of the reason i wanted to get back into brokering, which I've done in the past, is just so much more flexibility and options for clients. You could be a lot more nimble. Um, but typically it's going to be residential um, real estate, whether it's, you know, primary, um, second home, you know, investment, kind of do it all. Right on. From that standpoint. What about yourself? Uh, I'm a financial advisor. I'm a wealth planner. And uh, oh, I, awesome. I, I say again. I said awesome. Oh, yeah, that's right. See, Vito, why don't you, why don't you ever respond that way? Because you're a financial advisor. Remember, you're like one step below realtors. Yeah, remember much. he's a, he's a marine. Just just right. keep that in mind. Okay. Right. <laughs> and so uh, I've been doing that for off and on for uh, um, I want to say about twenty four years. I say off and on because although I started pretty young, obviously after after nine eleven things were busy, so I was gone a lot. Yeah. And so I didn't actually didn't have a long streak of like focused work in this until about 2014 right 13 14 something like that so um um yeah and, and but however I, I mostly work with people who are self-employed or, or have a small business and Vito doesn't know this but actually in 2000 2024 i'm actually going to be getting even <laughs> i'm getting very even more targeted i, I plan on working uh, although i'll still work with people who refer me refer me something you know that they like because i only work with people i like Except Vito, of course, and um, so if they refer somebody over, it's probably people I'd like, like I would like as well. Uh, however, I, I'm only going to be actively pursuing people who are uh, uh, are veteran, are, are veteran, uh, are veteran-owned businesses, or, or veteran self-employed uh, types of folks. So glad to meet another veteran who's uh, doing something I'm, I might need some help with. So awesome! No, that's awesome. I'd love to help you in any way possible. What's really cool is I work with my wife. She's actually 
been doing it longer than me. I, like I said, I was in the Navy for 10 years, so I didn't oh, meet her until I got out. She was 10 years already into the industry. She's a former underwriter and everything. So, you know, oh, I do the fishing and, and, and <laughs> you know, kind of game planning, if you will, with the clients. But then, gosh, she's so invaluable from from paperwork turned into approval all the way to closing so that, you know, I can do what I like to do and she can do what she likes to do. And we don't have to cross over. It works out really good. So she's amazing. And, so And, and the, the follow up with Scott's it's Lisa, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Lisa is impeccable at follow up, pushing things through, making right sure every file is completely done. It's always a smooth process. I can't say it was with Scott. You know, it's really you know, with partnership, with, partnership with his wife too. Like he makes the money. No, no, she. You make it. No, no, you spend it and make it. And she like what? No, okay. No, yeah. So I, I, uh, I initially attract it. She makes sure we don't lose it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, that we do a great job all the way through. Um, I, I make the uh, money and I get twenty dollars a week. That's yeah, you make that's the money. And she keeps you from spending it. That's 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 correct. That's you make correct. it, she keeps it. That's that's the partnership. There, there we go. Uh, yeah, she's she's really good with it, managing it. Well, it works out. I always say the day she says I'm not doing this business anymore, I'm not doing it anymore. I, uh, I I'm too spoiled with uh, how how important it is to have a team member like that. I, I couldn't I couldn't find someone to replace her. It's impossible. So I'm yeah. lucky and blessed. We have another veteran loan officer that we talked to, and. Um, he jumps from business to business. He's a great guy, right? And uh, his his Lisa recently left and in the middle of one of the deals that we were working on and it just fell apart. And what do you mean left? I don't get it. She stopped working for him. Oh, but it's not, it's not his spouse. No, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, gotcha. no. So technically the term, the, the title that Lisa does is loan processor. She gotcha. does all the heavy lifting. Scott's the pretty face, even though Lisa's beautiful. He's yeah. the one that's, he's the front man. He's the one that brings in the business and she does. Face for radio else. only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> face only a radio can love. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Joe, Joe Rogan, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, yeah. And then Scott and I met five years ago. Uh, by a friend of ours, mutual acquaintance who's since passed away. And we've done a couple of deals together. And I tell you, every every time a deal goes through with these guys, it's smooth like butter. So, I mean, Thank you. Just, Thank just yesterday I sent you a, a lead, right? Yep. What was that? A, I think I responded in 15 seconds, set the appointment in uh, 45 seconds and had the call today at uh 9 30 and uh yeah it's uh gonna be i good i gave him a little homework though he's gotta he's gotta touch base with you and we gotta figure out how to make this work and put a plan together with his price point but uh we're not gonna give up trying to trying to serve him you know right so it's gonna be a long haul yeah i'm, I'm excited that Vito finally introduced me to you i, I didn't have a veteran loan officer um in my sphere of i guess connection uh so i don't have a, a veteran financial planner so this is a match made in heaven oh my yeah. god should we not put you guys on mute for you a little bit you pick yourself off the screen we don't need you oh, anymore. Yeah. I'll be <laughs> you done. I'll, you know, exactly <laughs> so, so the think, reason why the reason why scott we asked you to come on board today is because uh, a couple questions i keep asking all these crazy hair bone questions and i'm pretty sure i know where the answers are right now sure but um, the main question I have from your 26 years of experience, 27 years of experience, what happens to the market when rates go down? Because this last week, what happened? Yeah, well, I mean, it really depends, right? It depends on where prices are. I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is what drives the housing market is affordability and, and how paychecks match up to that affordability, whether it's coming from the interest rates that are causing the payment or the loan size and the interest rate that's causing the payment based on the house price and the ability to put down payment based on the house price. So it's kind of multi multifaceted. Um, we have a problem right now with affordability, even with 
rates coming down. We had a problem with affordability even when rates were low to some degree. It's just been exacerbated now. Um, and so, you know, I just did an email blast out, you know, about rates coming down and it's, it's, you know, I've had some conversations with clients and, you know, they're saying it's, it's still unaffordable right now. Um, and, and, you know, that's not something that's just going to, going to change because of, uh, you know, a percentage drop in interest rates, you know, we're down into the mid sixes now, which is phenomenal. We were, we hit eight, what, six, seven weeks ago. Um, the, so we still got an affordability problem. And I, I think that, um, especially in the Bay area, I don't really, you know, and I'd love to get your take on it, but I don't see prices, um, reducing themselves at all. I see a huge problem next year with affordability for borrowers, um, from the standpoint of home prices going up because of lack of inventory, because of the interest that's going to be peaked once those rates do hit down into the low sixes and mid fives. And now we're going to have four times, five times the amount of buyers desperate to get into this inexpensive market, uh, bidding up the home prices, exacerbating the problem. So it is a problem. Um, yeah. So kind of your take on it. What I've been telling people for the last two years, that's about when uh, April of last year, actually, April 22, when the mar rates started going up, that slowed down the market just a tad bit, right? It slowed yeah. down for about six months, eight months. We saw prices contract because rates went up. Yep. Uh, then 7% became the normal versus the 2%. And people started going back into normal buying mode. And yeah. I just closed on a deal yesterday and I just got into contract on another one, a listing that I had. Uh, the first one was a listing, original everything over in Cambrian area. And uh, we listed at like 1.2 and we listed, I think, what do we sell it for? 1.36, had 15 offers. Yeah, 136 and we expected 1.3. So we listed at wow. 1.2 aggressively i mean i could have done 1.1 it doesn't matter it's still the, the same thing would have happened and then yesterday uh, we had the house on market for seven days let me see if i can find it real quick while i'm talking it's not a good thing <clears throat> anyway we there it is let me let me share this with you there look at this house right here Less than a thousand square feet, listed at seven hundred. So three bedroom, two bath. It, it's a it's a train wreck, right? I mean, Wait, it's a three bedroom, two bath, less than a thousand square feet. Less than a thousand square feet. They wow. converted the garage into an apartment, and they had a sunroom in the back that they converted into a living room that could be used. So it has a little bit extra space, but I mean, you can look inside of it, and I can tell you specifically that there's just. Um, nothing fancy about it it needs to be completely not torn down but everything needs to be redone the kitchen the bathrooms the floors the, the paint the lights the switches the doors the windows uh, it has wall furnaces not that that's a bad thing but i listed at seven hundred thousand. we had 13 offers and we sold i think it sold for 860 no 835. we were expecting it to sell for 750. Hmm. comps on the low end suggested 750 would have been a strong offer i got 800 i, I bumped it up obviously but we finalized at 835. are you going to have any challenges appraising you think it doesn't matter because i had 13 offers and the top ones had zero contingencies and more than 20 percent down and yeah. as is and so I guess when, I should reword that. Is it is it going to be worth it? No. Uh, from an appraiser standpoint, it's worth it from the buyer standpoint because we know what, what's going to happen to that price of that home next year. Yeah. Um, but we're talking. Appraiser looks at opinion value of yeah. today. Right. Right. It's amazing. I was, I was just listening to uh, how you laid out the dilemma going forward, Scott. No matter what interest rates do, up, down, left, or right. And we've talked about it earlier, Vito, um, about the whole housing situation in general. I think most people are working under the assumption that they're going to wait 
because there's some kind of 2008 or nine thing going to happen again, right? Uh, uh, because the economy, this economy, that, uh, um, and inflation and rates are high, and at some point something's going to give, and that's when I'm going to get in. Um, right? I feel like that's kind of like the you're, 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 say. You're, you're absolutely correct about that, and that's uh, you know fear, false evidence appearing real. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, re the, the reason for that uh, we all know was loose money, mm -hmm. um, no skin in the game. That all changed. There was massive skin in the game after that. There's massive equity in people's properties now. There's yeah. massive uh, interest to hold on to a home right. that has right. a two, three percent interest rate right now. Right. At all costs, family members will jump in to help someone save that home. Yep. Um, yep. It's not. It's not going to happen. It's yeah. just it's very happen. different. Two thousand eight and nine was a different thing. It is yep. not. Particularly when, it, when we talk about uh, you know home values and property and buying in California, especially. Okay, it's just not the same. Last year, I don't see a scenario, uh, no matter, you know, no matter what happens during the election, no matter what happens to the economy, there's still not enough homes and there's still more buyers. Um, I just don't see anything like that happening. Yeah. Right. I, I heard a statistic a while back about the, the whole 2% interest rate of the 60% of the 33 or 35 million homes in the United States, 80% of them. I'm sorry, of the, there's, sorry, 60% of the homes across the United States have a mortgage on it. 40% yes. are paid off. 80% mm -hmm. of the homes that, 80%, 80, 80% of the homes that have a mortgage on it refinance it to the two to two to three and a half percent range. Mm -hmm. So those people will never sell unless they absolutely freaking have to. What, right? Divorce, death, what have you. Which happens? They'll never, so that, that's basically half of our entire supply. So what we're working on are people that are dying. That's why I'm selling these houses right now or divorce or relocation. And they just don't want to be a landlord. And so our supply has dwindled to nothing. We have 200 units on the market right now in San Jose. Yeah. Um, and the demand is out there. It doesn't matter. We do have houses that are overpriced with, unrealistic expectations from the sellers and the sellers absolutely not touching any offers unless it's what they want. I get it. But for the most part, if you price it right. I think, he, oh, I think he's frozen. Um, I'm going to say something too. We'll wait for him to go. Oh, there you are, Vito. We lost you. You're back. You got to pay Bye. your uh, internet Sorry. bill there. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna uh, piggyback on something you're talking about about people not leaving their properties, unless divorce or death and all that. Um, I, I just I've been in some conversations with people that are like, you know, if someone dies in the family, they're gonna do everything they can to hold on to that property just because of the payment. To, right. to they're gonna turn it into a rental. They're gonna move into it themselves. They're like, we won't see this again. Why would I? Why would I get rid of this? So. With, with the, the the Fed doing what they did to cause that, there's a lot of people that are very happy, but it's causing a whole nother massive problem that we now have. It's called um, second and third order effects, right? And, and that's right. That's what's happening. Um, that's right. And yet, it's, I think uh, the other thing to consider here, uh, I'm sure you guys probably talked about it before, is 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 that uh, interest rates are still historically pretty good. I yes. think it's just we can't help but compare it to the last 20 years. <laughs> I, right. I've got a graph up right now. We hit the peak in uh, you October. You know how to share it? Um, sh uh, sure, let me try. Let me go share. All right. and uh, Share the whole screen. Just, it's just hard to yeah. stomach the race because they've been so low for so long. You know, last most but, of my adult life, we got to enjoy these incredible low rates. And so, uh, right. however, so what, you get beyond what, that, you, you widen the lens a, a bit. And it's still, like, not terrible. It's still pretty good. Can you see this? Yeah, I'm jumping Morgan. in. Okay. You can see that. Oh, there you go. Here, yep. Here's uh, what October 1981. Okay. Look at that. Look at the trend down. We have been improving yeah. Yeah. for 20, what is that, 40 years. Right. This is why no one wants to let go of what they have right now. 
Yeah. I mean, you can start to back up an inflation graph and it, it right. probably kind of looks similar. These are all different generations of people enjoying and prospering and realizing it kept getting better and better and better and better. No way they want to let go now after that. Yeah. You know, it would be, it would be foolhardy for them to do it. Right. I was talking to a guy this morning at uh, dad's coffee. <clears throat> Every Friday we get together with a bunch of dads that I know from school, from the kids' schools, and we have coffee. And he's a watch guy. He just loves watches. And he said, I'm never going to sell my watches. It's my legacy for my kids. I have a house. I have all that other, my fine, whatever. But that's that's this is what people do to bank on the legacy of your name as, as a person that put their footprint on this earth, right? This is a total sidebar, but I can't help it. Remember, you've seen that movie, Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Course, right? <laughs> Christopher Walken. Yeah, and this watch. Oh, that's right. I hope your dad's Easter. You want to make sure you got it. Anyways, I digress. Wait, was that was that was that Pulp Fiction? Yeah, or was, or was that uh, uh, the True Romance? No, no, no it's Pulp Fiction. Pulp. Oh, okay. it just it True Romance again. was an incredible scene with Christopher yeah. Walken in that one. Oh, am I getting confused then? Maybe uh, no, no. He's sitting again. there facing um, uh, who was the actor in Easy Rider? Um, famous actor, not fond of it. The other one. Um, oh, he passed. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. And that that scene in there where he's uh, talking about his uh, uh, to Christopher Walken about his Italian heritage. A great, great scene. But walk anyway. I know we're side barring. That's a great movie. But, Check out anyway. True Romance when you get a chance uh, over the holiday. Uh, yeah, really good movie. With oh, it's uh, awesome movie. That, that was oh, awesome. Yeah, movie. <laughs> good anyway, stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, Vito. Go ahead. <laughs> we, we, just, we need to get an uplift with this all this you know inventory talk right now. No, it's right. true though. Right. I mean, so I have a lot of people that are are in and out of the market. Right? They're like, oh, I want to buy one out. I want to buy now. And I'm working with one of my escrow reps, and her her husband's like, oh, the market's going to crash. Like, no. <laughs> There's not enough mark. There's not enough inventory for the pent up demand. Yeah. We have yeah. years of pent up demand. Back in 2008, we had pent up inventory because we had a shadow inventory of 30 months of bank owned properties that were going to be taken away from people and sold off on the market. Yeah, I don't, blame, I don't. I don't blame people for feeling that way though, only because they're not educated. That if you're not in the industry or specifically understanding these things, how would you know that? How would you know to 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 to, to understand that that's the situation? Not only that, you're getting marketed to um, through social media about how that crash is coming, right? So, oh, there's a crash coming. Well, hell, that that's gonna be the time to buy, right? So, um, absolutely. But you okay. should buy now and then save up enough to buy when the crash happens, because yeah, totally. Uh, I just so, it's, I think it's it's challenging for most home potential homeowners I think to truly understand you know what's the strategy here because the default is I don't understand so I'm not going to do anything but hopefully there's a crash coming yeah that's fear right yeah and that that's going to keep you from buying into your future totally. and we talked about it before right when you buy a house unless you refinance and refinance and refinance which is where Scott makes his money you buy your house and you get locked into that payment. And if it makes sense to refinance because you can lower it, that's great. But you get economically locked into that payment. It doesn't go up every year like your rent does. You build legacy, you build yeah. equity, you build value of your of, of your estate. And that's when we can trade off to you, Patrick, because then you can start talking to them about in investing in uh, real estate investment trust hedge funds condos in Mexico condos in Mexico <laughs> yeah I mean there's there's so many different options right and there's so so Scott before you yeah. came on we were talking about the hedge fund the legislature yeah. being pushed through I read uh, a little bit about that well, thing not you. legislation being presented but not pushed through yeah. that's for sure right so and there's a there's a really low chance of that happening but I mean it's <clears throat> I get it, right? The reality is, is it's single family homeowners have the majority of the, the homeownership, but then it's mom and pop. But the hedge funds seem to be the bad guys, which is 3%. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of houses, especially in metropolitan areas. But um, at the same time, that's where that's where you're going to be able to jump in. And 
Are you seeing people buy condos and townhouses right now? Me? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like, uh, I got two guys right now, two separate borrowers that are looking for them. One is uh, a gentleman I was just on the phone with about a half an hour ago. We've been talking for the last week. He's looking, he was looking for what he thought might be affordable when we ran numbers at about 800K for either a townhome or condo somewhere in the, in the South Bay, but on his single income and he's making really good money, but he's just over the ratios because, you know, he's 28 years old. He's got a big car payment. And um, we decided that he's not to get what he wants and afford it. Cause that's what I always talk about my clients. Hey, yeah, I can bring in a co-signer for you, but that increases your payment. You still got to make the payment. How are we going to strategize to make that work? Okay. So we talked about him getting a roommate, maybe selling that car and getting a cheaper car. And now we're going to need the mom and dad to co-sign, put 10% down and bump up to a million dollars to find something that he'll be satisfied with. And so uh, we're starting that home search uh, next week. Most likely we got to get mom and dad to get all their paperwork in now and, and, and get them uh, pre-approved along with him. So, so that's what I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeing. And um, it's, uh, it really frustrates me that, that so many young people that are entering and have good jobs that can't find what they want when, when we had no problem doing that. It's, it's a changing landscape, and I've never seen more co-signing than I have now or parents mm -hmm. dipping into their retirement or their savings to help their kids qualify. Yeah. Right. And, and maybe you're seeing that, Patrick, as a, you know, in a financial advisor, maybe people asking you, hey, should I, is it, how's this going to affect me if I help my child or, or, or you know, for my retirement plans? But that is um, definitely a, a, a increasing trend that's been happening probably, I want to say, last probably five, 10 years has the yeah. that baby boomer generation has started to, to get to that place um, where they can do that for their kids. Um, um, yeah. On the other, yeah, on the other side, there's no shortage of dual income, each making a quarter million, husband and wife working in Silicon Valley. And I find the other trend is lots of income, but haven't accumulated much savings yet. Yeah. But are on their way to it. They're waiting for their their stocks to invest and, and, and lots of other things and they want to enter in. So, that tells me there, I have a lot of metrics that say there is no crash coming in. Anyone that thinks that is really, really getting bad advice. And it's up to all of us as, a, as advisors, we're, no matter what field we're in, we're still all financial advisors one way or another, um, that we've got to educate. Right. And, and, and Vito, you've got a great platform here to, to continue doing that. So, well, what I what I find is as I'm having some conversations with people right now, they're understanding that that whole, OK, I wait till next year. It's going to cost me home goes up fifty thousand dollars. It's really a hundred thousand dollar cost to me because I didn't ride the equity up and I paid fifty thousand more. Oh, by yeah. the way, I I'm going to now have a higher tax basis on my home because I waited. That's also six months to a year of not having four savings of paying a mortgage down. I'm also not getting a tax deduction. And I can't save as fast anyway. So, I mean, there's all kinds of problems with waiting to buy. Plus you're paying 12 months of rent. And you're yeah. paying 12 months of rent. And you're so buying. You're, you're, you're paying to buy, just not your house, right? <laughs> Somebody else. So else. my point is they have to see it. And, and when you put it into numbers or put it into a spreadsheet or you put it on a graph, a pie chart or whatever, that's when their eyes open up. Yeah because they're just getting their quick little TikToks and their and whatever. But if you show them, hey, let's look at what your payment's going to do if you wait until next year. Let, let's look at what the lost equity is going to be. Let's look at what you're throwing away in rent. When you show it to them, I, th I think the, the sense of urgency starts to develop. Um, sure, sure. And it and it's just that they got to have the right advisor to do that, who's out there looking out for their best interest and letting them know I'm not doing this to, to, to scare you into uh, me doing a transaction for you. It's the reality of what you're facing. And, and you need to know that. That's right. You know, I, I want you in the market and you're going to have a much harder time next year. So please don't let that fear stop you. Let's figure out how to do it. That's right. That's right. That, that whole that whole uh, narrative and vocabulary around market crash, which or economy crash, all, all those things, uh, even even if those things happen again, like there's still the math is clear. There's not enough homes mm. for people who want to buy. So yeah. even if something were to happen where, okay, there's less buyers out there because financially something happened to them, 
there, the deficit is still high enough to where it's not going to cause some major crash in house price. That's just not going to happen. That's just, it's just, that's not what the, uh, that's not what the, what the math looks like. Uh, it's not 2008 or nine. It's not that anymore. And that's not to say the economy won't crash or could not crash or might not crash. We just don't see it happening yeah. on the one segment of our GDP that we're talking about right now. Right. It could be yeah. the automotive market. That's what I mean. Breaks, you know, it, it breaks down happen. our, yeah we just don't know figures, it has happened or is happening like right i like, like i'm like listening to a tiktok people. guy right now that sells home uh, cars used cars and he says that there's a massive inventory of of take backs or repos right there's the health industry that's overcharging and there's people that are completely overwhelmed in credit or debt for health care there's the prescription or pharmaceutical industry that could crash because of some sort of legislation there's <clears throat> The financial market, there's the military aerospace, right? That could just completely collapse because we shut ourselves off. We just don't know. We have, but we can't just cut out, out anything. We're talking about our little slice of the bubble, which is it has zero inventory. There's zero supply because we've stopped building. If you look at the trends of new builds over the last 60, 70 years, you see that we're down to about 30% of what we've been doing for the last few decades the last 20 years have been horrible for new builds we're building as much as we can but bureaucracy cost overruns and just lack of desire we're just not building as many homes as we should be for the population yeah that's right curious uh vito what's your thoughts on you know we're obviously our own bubble here sorry sorry for the word bubble <laughs> this conversation but we're in our own little sphere if you will silicon valley do you feel because you've done a lot of research on this in other areas of the country where appreciation levels aren't very high where um equity isn't quite what it is here due to our appreciations that there could be a slowing or even a, a, a maybe a, a little crash in some areas where they're super dependent on one industry um do you feel that that's something that could happen even though it most likely isn't going to happen here yeah it depends on the area and there's always micro mm -hmm. econ economies or micro industries like smaller towns like st louis st louis has healthcare and they have financial but they don't have any other industry so if that happens to collapse and that could bring down that train take detroit as the example right detroit uh, is a suffering uh, city because their industry left their and what's their industry automotive automotive manufacturing right I went to Mexico I went to Indiana Indianapolis and all these other places that place is a dust a dust bowl if you look at let's say Cape Coral I look at Cape Coral every week Cape Coral Florida Fort Myers that uh, inventory is growing over 6,000 units mm. compared to our 200 units but it's cyclical it's seasonal and when you look at cape coral the main buyer there the main demographic there are retiree snowbirds mm. so the best time to sell your house is when people come down from indianapolis when they're all frozen over and they're like i just want to buy a house here i'm done living in the snow and that that's why there's a lot of houses for sale plus we also had Hurricane Ian go through last year and they're settling out their insurance claims and they're like, I'm done living in, in Florida because I hate the hurricanes and the $10,000 a year insurance. Right. Yeah. We talked about that with Taylor the other, the other day. Yeah. Is it Taylor? Yeah. Taylor yeah. The insurance guy. And yeah, this, this whole, this whole challenge of not enough homes and too many people needing them. That, that's a national thing. That's that yeah. is totally not just a California thing. That is nationwide for sure. Yeah. With but some also, micro places that are doing better with the building compared to others. Uh, that is a national problem. Right. And Florida's like Cape Coral is a different world than what we have. We, when you want to buy a new home here, there's a development. There's a couple, five or six acres, and they develop as many houses as they can on it. They either have one developer or four or five, and they develop the heck out of every acre, every square inch. In Cape Coral, it was developed so that you can pick your property they put in the infrastructure, the utilities, the sewer and all that other stuff. And then they sell a lot and then you can build on it. And they have multiple developers that way. They're also doing the, 
the standard traditional when we say traditional the california way where you buy swaths of land but that's um you're under an hoa then too so what was surprising to me uh coming out of COVID was you know the trend of people more people working from home and i thought that would play out in a way where um you have people moving farther and farther away from traditionally most wanted you know like silicon valley they're, they're moving to colorado they're moving to florida they're moving wherever right so you're going to see demand spread to other places i thought that was going to happen and kind of be more sticky that has not seemed to be the case and there's been a big push to get people back into um into office buildings yep because there's like millions of square feet of office space left empty right uh you're seeing huge problems in the commercial uh uh space uh commercial lending space and commercial property space as a result uh, i think what was it large what was the large company just went under they, they rented they rented out like small workspaces to people um gosh we are largest one in the country yeah yeah i know what you're talking about uh, oh. the now. anyways um and so and yet then you just oppose that against what we just talked about Vito, about these uh, large tech companies building their own communities and getting and owning the homes outright and renting them to their employees and so um I thought that would be a trend that would probably alleviate some of the local housing costs, but that has not been something that that sustained at all. And, and now, it, yeah, and now yeah. metropolitan areas are coming back and saying we're going to start charging you by the mile. There's going to be toll booths or toll charges on every road. So San Jose just put a supposition on because New York's doing it now, and San Francisco is talking about it. So now San Jose's got to talk about it, but they're saying. 10 to 30 cents, depending on what time you drive. There's like search, search charging. And they're going to charge you all the miles. Even though we get pay, we charge, we get taxed on our property tax for roads, even though we get taxed on gas for roads. Our roads are the worst in the nation, by my opinion, no other fact. And <laughs> now they want to come back and charge us by the mile to use the road. Well, they're trying to get ahead of it, right? Because they, they want to get rid of gas cars eventually. So, I mean. well, it's just a money grab, is what it is. They they have Santa Clara County uh, property tax roll was six hundred billion dollars a couple of years ago. Six hundred billion dollars. Now, a lot of that goes to retirement for our 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 people that serve for 20, 30 years. I get that, but um, there's a lot of stuff that our 10% sales tax doesn't pay for that should, right? And we pay the highest gas in the, in the nation. And all these are because we voted in these taxes so that we can have a better lifestyle and they're being mismanaged and misused. And it's not political, that's just how the government is working. It's how the government is working, it's not the politicians, right? Because that ebbs and flows. It's just a big problem that we're having. Yeah. Wild. I know. Um, I don't know if we, I don't know if I have time to get to it today, but I think Vito, did you mention it that you, you guys were talking about a veterans benefit that um, is literally is, or is very rarely heard of or used, or I've never heard of this before. I know nothing about it. I just saw yeah. it on a TikTok because I'm a TikTok addict. <laughs> I oh. admit it. I go to TikTok anonym, Friend, anonymous. Don't let friends use TikTok. Yeah. Sorry, I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a VA loan that's very not very well known. Oh, so that wasn't so, that was something you know about. I thought that was something Scott was what knew about. No, I yeah, no, it's it it's yesterday. it's a unicorn to me. I've never yeah, heard of it. <laughs> I talk to my wholesale reps; they don't know about it. Uh, you know, yeah. Oh, I mean, okay, I can't say it doesn't exist, but I've never heard anyone talk about it. I've yeah. never seen anybody do it. I've never seen anybody lend on it. Well, um, I got. It, First hand from TikTok, I don't know. One, it came from Vito. Two, it came from TikTok. So <laughs> yeah. believe what you want. <laughs> but so this this whole thing was you can have two veterans move in together, uh, agree to buy in together. What the hell is going on? To <laughs> your birthday? Sit the no, balloon. it did it the other day, just a couple minutes ago with my thumb, too. Well, it's probably I said the word unicorn and the AI. Uh, we and the colors and. Yeah, I thought you said that for post production. What's going on over there? Yeah. So you can get two veterans to get together and not just buy one to four units, which is the standard VA loan, but you can buy one to eight units, have one commercial unit, and then each veteran move into one of the units. 
I don't think that that's the other four, four, right? Yeah, each of them technically have four. But because it's one APN, I don't think the VA would allow that. I just yeah. no. I think it's kind of a hmm. a unicorn, like you said. Yeah. It was interesting. I haven't haven't heard of that. But I, I I love though that you know the down payments have lightened on on the units right now. That that is helpful for people that you need affordability. You know, jumping down to five percent down on on four units, that's huge. Um and that's FHA, right? VA, FA, uh, F, uh, conventional, even five percent down. Oh, really? Yep, yep, yeah. I believe it was uh, what twenty-five percent. I think for four units, fifteen percent for three or two. Anyway, it's five percent down, even at four units. Awesome. So think about that from a standpoint of, um, you know, someone buying a home, a primary residence, and then using that that other income to help them make that payment. So they can rent out the rooms, but you can, you have to qualify for it. You, you got to qualify. And so what do you, you know, so there's always a flip side to everything, right? Right. Okay. Now I'm putting less down. So I'm borrowing more, which means my PITI is going to be higher. So how's that going to shake out with the rent and the qualifying income that I'm bringing to the table? We got to work through that. Those numbers, make sure it's going to pencil out. Yeah. But um, I mean, the flip side too, like FHA still has, what is like 860 now, but like the VA, there's no, there's no income or there's no purchase limit low loan limit. Yeah. So essentially how that works is a lot of people think um, it's zero down indefinitely. And um, it's up to the maximum amount, usually like in the high cost areas, about a million eighty nine three hundred, which is going to you know change next year. But w- the way it works is once you hit that that maximum zero down, it's a really simple formula for every four dollars you go over in purchase price. The vet puts one dollar down. So if they bought a home that was four dollars over the uh the limit they would have a one dollar down payment oh all right i did not know it worked that because of the 25 percent va guarantee so right. you got to put one dollar down for every four dollars over so i had a client that bought you know a 1.8 million dollar home and they took the difference between what they could get up to zero down and then 25 percent of the overage was the down payment right awesome and took advantage of the va pricing which rates are typically lower and if you have a disability rating you got no funding fee that's huge, nice. you know. So, and the funding fee is a percentage of the loan, right? Yeah, it's a percentage of the loan. <laughs> and you would think that if you used it a second time, it'd be the same or cheaper, but they actually increase the funding fee on you the second time around. It gets a little bit more expensive. So the second time you use your VA loan? Yeah, yeah, it, it jumps up. Uh, and um, if you have um, a disability rating, uh, any zero. rating or, or minimum rating? Zero, no, dis- if you have a, even if you have a zero disability rating, that used to not be the case years back. You had to have like 10% or more. Now it's, if you get a zero rating, which you can get, which is for uh-huh. really minor stuff. Yep. And uh, I had a joke. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. This is being recorded <laughs> for, for Vito. <laughs> I guess you can text it to us later on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, zero funding fee. And I want to say it's like, gosh, I should know at the top of my head, it's like two and a quarter percent. 2.35, something, something, oh, something. Like that. So huge. do the math on a thousand dollar loan. That's a lot of money. Yeah. And <laughs> using a VA loan, your rates, I I'd say just saw th- three eighths to a half lower typically. So it's competitive, time. right? I mean, it, oh, it definitely behooves you to use it. Yeah. Back in my day when I was buying a house, we were stuck at 178 or once like 180 and we bought a $225,000 loan and we just couldn't make that difference. And we didn't have that option to do one dollar for every twenty, whatever the twenty-five yeah. percent. One dollar for every four over, yeah. yeah. And we just didn't have that, so we did a eighty fifteen five. We had five percent down, fifteen percent second, an eighty percent loan, and my fifth, my second was like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen percent. But I didn't care because it was two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for a house. I'm like, let's buy it, but we can't afford it. We can afford it. We'll just eat top ramen for six months. Yeah, and you know- our values went up and then we refied you know just a side note you made me think about just from a conversational piece with clients is that 80 15 5 you know first of all it avoids pmi and sometimes pmi it's not there's nothing wrong with it but that's another way to avoid the pmi but i tell clients listen who cares what the rate is on that i go here's what's kind of cool about having a second you can attack that second you could pay that second off and now you're left 
with a payment on just a first mortgage as if you had 20% when you bought the home. So you have that to look forward to in the future. Your payment's actually going down where you don't, where you're borrowing 95% one loan and just dropping PMI one day. Right? Are you, so, and with the PMI, oh, it depends on the loan, right? You have yeah. to refinance. Well, like for instance, let's say one of our wholesalers that we'll use often is Rocket. Um, they're phenomenal, by the way, on wholesale. They're terrible on retail. I mean, they're priced higher and you get you get the headset jockeys from across the nation. Right. Wholesale set up for, for it's streamlined. It's phenomenal. But the way they do it is their PMI is some of the lowest in the nation. And um, the way they the way their metric is to eliminate PMI and it's different for everyone is let's say I bought my home. I put 10 percent down. If in the next two years I can come up with a lump sum of that 10 percent that I didn't have and I can send it on the loan, they'll let you remove PMI typically right away. If I don't, I've got to keep their inexpensive PMI for 24 months, then I'm in the window to go ahead and, and show uh, an appraisal that says, hey, I'm, I'm at that 80% or lower equity mark. Uh, I'd like to petition to remove my PMI. Um, so that's how, that's how they do it, which is uh, kind of cool. Can you still write off PMI? PMI, uh, typically, again, I'm not a tax professional. Wait, I'm in, I'm in a skinny window here, so I got to do it like this. I can't do it like this. Um, how PMI typically worked was in the past, as I understood it, from $100,000 gross income to $110,000 gross income. Every $1,000 over hundred grand of income, uh, you lose 10% deductibility of PMI and phases out all the way up to $110,000 of earned income, then there's no deductibility on PMI. But with that said, check with your tax professional. Yeah, that's, that's how I understand. over my head. Yeah. Tax. <laughs> tax. But yeah, typically PMI uh, is still a deductible thing in many, many cases based on your income. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have a question for you. Uh, can you, can you lend to corporations, LLCs, trusts, et cetera? Some programs, you can do that. Your typical Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac stuff, no. But some non-QM stuff, you can lend to those. Non-QM, okay. Yeah, typically non-QM. I've not, I haven't seen it on a on any Fannie Mae products and, and majority of Jumbo products, but non, non there are non-QM programs that will uh, absolutely lend, lend to that. Yeah, non-qualified mortgage, it's a, uh, it's typically for investors. So instead of buying a house, looking at your income and your credit score, you're looking at the value of the potential income of that property. So if you're renting it out and you can make $2,500, that's what you're going to be qualified on. That's a DSCR loan, debt service coverage ratio, which falls under the umbrella of non-QM. But non-QM, non-qualified mortgage, is also it can be a, for a primary residence. Just means you're not falling under the typical ATR ability to repay. Got metrics it. that need to be met. And so that's what's wonderful about a non-QM, non-qualified mortgage, which means, hey, self-employed person, I know you don't have a lot to show on your tax returns. You make a lot of money. We shouldn't keep you out of the market. There's a loan program for you. Let's average your bank statement deposits for the last 12 months or 24 months. That would be an example of a non-QM loan. Another non-QM loan exactly what Vito just said would be a DSCR. Great loan for an investor who doesn't want to show any income, doesn't want to deal with a whole bunch of paperwork. Hey, how does this rent pencil out to my principal interest taxes and insurance? Let's just focus on that and make this loan work on this property. Mm. Great. And those, product. Are, those are typically RESPA, right? One to four units, not five and six. Uh, go, up to, go up to, uh, gosh, I want to say even eight on some of those. And what's the down payment on those? Uh, you know, typically um, you're putting down if it's non owner, gosh, I'd have to see because it's changing right. The landscape's changing right now, but probably minimum. 15% or more. Okay. I want to say there might be someone aggressive out there to do 10%, but probably not. And you got to have a lot of, you got to, you know, you got to have reserves, good credit, and you've got to have some experience sometimes with some of the down, lower down payment scenarios as an investor, or they're not going to lend to you on that program because they're not even bringing your income into it. They're right. saying you're an investor. We're, we're relying only on income coming in. Hopefully that income does come in so you can make yeah. your mortgage payment. So a little bit more risk there. Um, and then one other product that's great for primary residents, since we're talking about it, uh, is the no ratio program. Perfect for the person that wants to buy a primary residence, which a lot of these products don't work for because you got to meet the ability to repay. 
is uh, they've 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 tightened it a little bit. It was 20 percent. I believe they're at 25 now. But let's say you got a million dollars in the bank, but you're a teacher and you can't afford this home you want to buy. But your husband who wants to stay home with the baby, talking about an example I had and have some alone time with the baby and not have to work for a while. Hey, they can afford it. Just draw off of that uh, million dollars in the bank in that trust. Well, they can't afford that million dollar home on the teacher's salary. So as long as um, we've got enough money in the bank, we can go no ratio. As long as we can show a 12 to 24 months reserves, depending on the down payment, great way to help a person get into a primary residence and not meet the income qualifying. No job on the application at all. Oh, wow. And there's no impact on like, they don't get penalized by like uh, interest rate or anything like that. It's uh, uh, That sounds like a ninja. Oh, we lost your, we lost your. Oh, I don't call it a penalty. I call it a uh, a golden ticket to get into real estate where you're going to make a lot of money. And in a year you refinance that property. So um, that's the don't look at the pennies. Look for the dollars. Right. Mindset. Don't trip over the pennies. So that's that fear. You got to get the client over because that their first thing is, oh, rate, Right. Just like they're doing now. I'm not going to buy because rates are high. I'm waiting for them to come down. So. They they don't want to lose three thousand dollars in extra interest, but they're going to lose seventy five thousand dollars in home price. Right. And that's right. our job to help them understand the difference. That's you right. can refinance that rate. Right. I don't want to use that overused um, statement. We all we know the marriage and the, you know, the date and all that. I'm not going to use it because it's so overused. But that's what typically happens. Right. Is buy now. Save money on the property price. Refi your loan next year when everyone's running around like ants trying to overbid on properties. It's, they're gonna they're gonna spend more money. So well, one more question for you, uh, Scott. Yeah. Only because we had talked about it earlier. Yeah. You, you reminded me right now. Uh, a single or a private investor owns their home. Now they're buying investment single family residences. I believe they can only. There's some kind of rule here where they can only get up to. I want to say it's 10 and then they have to get different kind of financing, right? Could you? Yeah. Just for me? 10, 10 was the norm. Like I was doing. I have a. I have a family that has like 20, 23 to 25 properties in their family. And we, we, we ran into it. Uh, the guy that, that, that's that process right there for uh, certain kinds of loans. Then we found other kind of loans where you can go to 20. Then we had a problem because they were went going to 22, 23, and then we were able to go to 25. So it just depends on, on the lender, but some of these non QM DSCR lenders, we were at like 25. Okay. And so you I, get I, like, I, yeah, like you could do it. Financing up to about eight, nine, 10. Then after that, you may have to look at, you, you got to look at. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember the latest for Fannie and Freddie right now. A quick Google search would bring that up, but I, I, I think they were at 10. I, I haven't yeah. looked for a while, okay. but um, I will tell you one thing. I did their first loan with not doing a DSCR and going to Fannie Mae. And I will never do that again. I'll get out of the business before I will ever do a traditional loan for someone that owns that many properties because you've got to document everything, mm. every single property, every mortgage statement, every piece of insurance on that property, every HOA. What's the history of payments go for the last? I mean, it. my poor wife, I thought she was going to quit and I wasn't I was going to be a realtor on Vito's team um, and, and, and move over and become an agent. You make was, a lot of money. <laughs> it was so much work. So uh, I told them we're only doing DSCR now. It's based on the property you buy or, or you got to get another loan officer because we won't do that again. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Sounds and like they realized it too. They didn't, they didn't like getting all the paperwork and it, it took forever to gather it all up. It, imagine being that organized on 25 properties and the analysis that goes into it. So it's a disaster. And it's probably in multiple States. So you have to have tax returns for multiple States and, yeah, well, no, I mean, most of it's concentrated in Salinas and in, in the Marina Salinas area down ah. there is where they have it in Monterey Salinas. So, um, oh, terrible. Yeah, but great family, <laughs> wonderful family. Uh, nightmare, though, to handle that many properties to do one loan at a time and then have to do it again and again every time. Yeah, it's so the beauty you, of the SDR. You handle commercial? We do. Um, I don't typically focus in on it nor market for it, but right. we, we can do it. Yeah. We have wholesale lenders that we can uh, set our clients up with and do it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, awesome. 
Yeah, I know we we're going to talk about where the, the market's going to go, but we all agree that it's going to go up. Even if the yeah. economy collapses, it's only a matter of a few months, right? I mean, that's what we saw just this last time. April was the peak. It went down in all, all the way to like August, which was like four months, five months. And it started building back up. And now we're yeah. like this last week, I looked at at san jose average sales prices were seventeen thousand away from seventeen thousand dollars on average away from last the 2022 april peak that was an all-time high so only seventeen thousand dollars away from it and yet we're supposed to be in a recession and yet not not saying that's not happening in merced or marina or st louis i always pick on poor st louis but it, Different areas have different numbers, so you have to be very educated on what's going on. When you have two hundred, though, that that's still that problem. Not enough homes for too yeah. many people. That's still a trend line that's not getting closer. It's getting farther apart, if anything. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I you look at every one of the counties, the ten counties around the Bay Area, and only one is below ninety percent, which is Napa. And Napa is just hurting. I don't know why. They only had 16 sales last week. They uh, The most expensive one is obviously San Mateo and then Santa Clara. And we have by far the most units sold, which is 6,800 units sold. And that's down by 1,900 year to date. Mm-hmm. We just don't have the inventory for the demand. And... Yeah. You're like, how in the hell? I mean, I make X amount of money. How can I afford it? Well, there's places for you to buy, right? You might have to travel a little bit, but homeownership is not out of reach. I can get you into a house in Napa or Contra Costa or Alameda. Uh, you're in Alameda, right, Scott? Uh, my office, Alameda County. Yeah. Yeah. And do you do you um, do you guys provide financing for folks buying out of state too, as well, Scott? I don't. I'm a broker. I'm just, you know, it's a lot to go through licensing in multiple states. You know, okay. a lot of your your big bankers get, you know, somebody point of contact that's licensed in all the states and they can do that. Um, I may expand a couple more states, but uh, I mean, if I look at the opportunities out of state, it's it's maybe one one or two every every quarter that it comes out. It doesn't come up a lot, um, gotcha. but uh, Florida is on the radar, Texas you know, for me, but, uh, right now just California, Got it. Oregon Got it. to Tijuana, mm-hmm. those borders. Yeah. I don't know about Tijuana. And the only reason why I was asking is I, I think for some folks, maybe they, maybe they just really, it is an affordability problem for them to, yeah. And you know, the math is, is an issue that they can't solve their current income. Renting is cheaper somehow. Um, but maybe buying, because you know, on the flip side of not enough homes, this means if you're or if you're a home if you're a landlord, it's that's pretty it's pretty good, right? You know you you know you got that, that, that's in your favor. Those numbers are in your favor if you're a landlord. So you know that doesn't mean maybe you don't buy your the house you're living in, but maybe you buy a home somewhere where you can rent out. Um, that that's might be hard to do in California, but I don't that's know. interesting. You brought that up. I have a client right now that can't afford to live here and is looking at. We're, we're looking at um, a property uh, search in Roseville for a rental property. Yeah. So he's going to put 25% down. And um, in fact, we're going to use a DSCR loan um, and uh, we're going to buy rental property there. And he'll continue to rent here right. uh, for a few more years because he's just too unaffordable for him. But he doesn't want to not be able to ride the wave of real estate. Right wealth and growth that he knows right. is important for his family so it's a, a a new way it's funny you brought that up because that is how some people are starting to think is well if i can't buy here for myself i'll buy somewhere else but i gotta buy exactly gotta I think it's totally a, a a viable strategy for yeah. a, a lot of folks probably have not considered as as well as they could and, and to your point you said earlier it just it just means advisors need to advise right yeah yeah that's, and that's people have to take that plunge, right? Once you start buying into it, then you're like, you completely understand it. And if you're paying rent here and you're still riding that economic lock of a house, then you can buy. And then once you save up, you buy another one and then you buy another one. It's the same thing with the fourplex. That's why I talked to our that, that lead yesterday. You buy a fourplex, 
And then a few years later down the road, you buy another one and then you move into that one, you fix it up or what have you. And then as you go, those rent, those rents will always increase. And you're having other people pay down that mortgage. That's right. And then next thing you know, after 10, 15 years, you have four or five and your payoff speeds up because you can pay off your first, your first purchase in 15 years because you're taking all the spare equity out of those or the spare income and you're putting it towards that house. There's tax reasons and all sorts of different things to do to rate, do that. But I know a lot of people that are set up that way and they're just, they don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. But we need to build more fourplexes. Yeah. What what are the stats on, on those right now for availability? Probably, probably pretty low, right? Everybody far between. Yeah. And, uh, you can get into it pretty easily. Uh, but I can tell you that there's a lot of slum lords that are out there. Yeah. So they're willing to just sell it as is and you're that's it. But then, you know, if you're working with a VA, there's certain habitability issues that need to be repaired before you can make a move. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at Santa Cruz. It's, it, my, my daughter is a junior in high school and she wants to go to Santa Cruz university. So as we were talking, I was just looking, there's only one, fourplex available in santa cruz Jeez. it's two and a half million. Oh, there you go that's that's, that's not i got that in your back pocket there Vito. it's no problem but the rents are over three thousand each so i can tell you that it's probably close to fourteen thousand dollars a month that would pretty much pay for half of that right yeah well you're, you're if she's going to move into it you're going to get three units Right. I'm not the four, but uh, what's that property going to be worth in 15 years? Yeah. And you're paying it down. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's uh, interesting times, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way, you know, and, right. and we, yeah. we got to help our clients understand the solutions on, on how to, how to own and get into the market somehow one way or the other. But um any kind of massive drop in prices isn't going to happen. So we got to find other solutions to, to make sure. Right. Well, that means you're buying one to live in yourself or you are like, like we talked about earlier, you're buying a rental property, whether it's here in California, preferably because California's a great place to own real estate or yeah. out of state, you know, wh wherever it is, wh whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll bet you one of the next trends is people going in together on buying rental property. Oh yeah, absolutely. They can't do it. They're on their own, you know, cause it's a way to at least get in. Hey, let's let's get in and do this together. It feels safer, um, yeah, yeah. and then we'll we'll split off after we kind of get a hang of this and, and and sell and buy on our own or whatever. But it's a great way to start and get in because you can do that, you know. Yeah, I can tell you from experience that we did that in Tahoe. We bought a a, a cabin up in Tahoe <clears throat> with another couple, but we didn't. I made a mistake. We didn't have an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. We didn't understand the nuts and bolts, who's going to pay what, how much, what is that going to look like? Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we said we'd buy it for five and own it for five years and maintain it. And we put a lot of money into it. And then at the end of the day, we had, you know, this equity that we had and we're like, how are we going to split it out? Well, we're going to refinance, take us off the market. And there was a lot of squabbling about who's paying what. So mm -hmm. if you do that, it's very smart, but have a lawyer draw something up sit down with your partner because they're a partner now and say this is what we want to do what are what are some negatives what are, and they're just basically a third party unbiased expert on how to deal with things like that how to get out of it who's responsible for what what happens if i get laid off and i can't make my payments what what if right so it might cost a couple thousand dollars but it's a couple thousand dollars worse worth not having that grief when you're exiting that partnership. Absolutely. Yeah, totally worth it. Another uh, term I used to hear uh, growing up in Spanish, it's cuentas claras, amistades largas. And so in English, it's you know, clear accounting between friends it means leads to long term relationships, right? So uh, be careful who you do things with, for sure. And that is totally what to do it. 
I, it was making me think uh, if I was to do that right now, what's one of the ways to hold us accountable? And just what popped into my mind is after it gets written out, I would have the details of that on like an automated email that just pops up in both our accounts every three months. It says four years, nine months left. <laughs> Here's the agreement. Yeah, four don't years, forget because your mind does left. wander, right? Here's the agreement. Right. Four years, three months left. Here's the agreement. That, you know, let technology hold everyone accountable, you know? Set it yeah, and but, forget it. <laughs> and you still got to have the right person because the, the wrong person would be like, okay, I have four years and six months to figure out a way to. <laughs> yeah. I have four <laughs> years and three months to figure out a way to. Yeah. That was one of the rubs. It was like we 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 set clear goals saying five years and we, we held on to it for five years. And, you know, we did the VRBO thing. It was pre Airbnb. So we rented it out. And then we had this one client that rented it out the entire ski season. We never got to use it. So for like three years, yeah, he paid for the entire mortgage for the entire year. That was great. But I mean, I wanted to go skiing. <laughs> so defeated the purpose. Yeah. So, you know, there's cer certain things to, to think about. And I think so the reason why we're having supply issues is not just the hedge funds that we talked about the hour before, but also the two and a half percent, the very low rates. But also people are investing in to Airbnb. And also there's people that are just dying, that choosing to die into the in their property. Right? One more. People that can't afford to sell their property and buy another one. They yeah. I mean, in, you know, it you, kind of piggied off the low rate one, but you could do that in different states. But here we have that proposition yeah. 19 that allows you to do that. Very so helpful. you can yeah. sell it and move it out, right? But in other states, yeah. it's it's not a possibility. So it's yeah, absolutely. So all that pushes into the fact that it's really hard to sell a property when it's when you're not ready. So my supply, my business is really the passing of my friend's parents, my my contacts, parents. I, I do divorce. I do uh, trust. I do I do uh, like relocation, but I don't work with a lot of buyers relocating in because there's not a lot. And then when they see sticker shock of how much it costs to live here, they're like, ah, I'm just going to move back to New Hampshire. Forget this place. <laughs> and that's just part of life. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, absolutely. It's just, it, I think we're going to see our, our supply dwindle even further next, the next two, three years mm -hmm. until we start pushing builders to develop more property because the problems that we have, the, the hedge funds owning, the Airbnbs, Airbnb could topple. Uh, you never know because um, they're getting greedy. I have a couple of videos on that. And then the um, the people that are buying property, it'll just that, that's not going to go away. The people that have ho two percent houses, they're never going to get rid of those houses. They can't. I mean, it's be it's foolhardy for them to do that. Even if it's assumable, it's foolhardy to do that. Well, my only pushback on that is, is that Southern California or Southern California, California in general is full of people who have been conditioned to refinance every so often because they find themselves in additional consumer debt and You're right. their home has been the way to kind of take care of that, which has been made way easier because like, Hey, the way the rates have been working. So like, what I'm, I'll be curious to see what happens three or four years from now, even sooner than that. I think uh, I already saw read as an article the other day that they said national the levels that the levels of credit card debt that people are are now having is starting to, you know, shoot shoot way up again. So um, I'll be I'll be interested to see even those folks who took advantage and got those rates as their spending habits has not changed, as their lifestyle habits have not changed, and that consumer debt creeps up again. Yeah, whether they'll be, you know, forced to to make some of those choices because the seven, the six or seven or eight percent on their home is still better than the, you know, um, the accumulated yeah. credit card debt or whatnot. If that makes sense, yeah, so we'll see. You know, it's true. You're absolutely correct. The the credit card debt is at all time high, and they're going to look at, um, I, I, how do I stop from drowning? Yeah, oh, okay, I'll take a little higher rate on my mortgage, but right. my my overall cash flow just improved by a thousand dollars. Right. Of course that makes sense. And right. I'm writing it off on my mortgage. That, that's still plus, a thing. Yeah. yeah. 
rates will come down again yeah. at some point and I'll take advantage of that. Right. And then right. you being a, a, a financial advisor would think like I do, it's like, okay, you're three years into this mortgage. Let's not put you on a 27 year mortgage now. Yeah. I don't want you to fall behind and front load that interest. I want you to keep going on the track you're on, you know? Right. Valuable advice we can give, but it's, you're right, Patrick, there, people will get rid of those rates for that. They won't necessarily sell. <laughs> Which is that's inventory right. problem. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, they, they'll refine. They won't necessarily. They won't sell for that. That's for sure. Right. Right. There's those are people that are out there that, like, <clears throat> I can brag a little bit. I go to the gym every day, right? And there's other people that go. I should go to the gym. I should live a more disciplined life. I should. I don't eat better, but I should eat better, right? I should. I should. Th there's certain things that you habitually do, and it takes a conscious choice to live under your means and become yeah. more responsible. However, the inflation that we've we've all witnessed over the last couple of years has made it really difficult for people to live because wages have not kept up with inflation. So you're in a quandary and I understand a majority of Americans are going to continue to do that, but we're not looking for those people. We're looking for people that want to get out of that situation yeah. Yeah. that want to be disciplined and do it every day and get up at five o'clock every morning, whether you want to or not, and just show up at the gym because that's how you get to, to financial security. Right. Little, little steps every day, right? Little incremental steps, consistency. You know, some days I show up at the gym and I don't, I put in like 50% effort, but I show up. You show today, up. Yeah. We know Vito. We know. Me and my belly. <laughs> Get in my belly. You, you ever just on the cycle, Vito? Just your legs are just kind of going like this, and you're working on your phone. But <laughs> TikToking on my yeah. phone this morning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming up with content. Yeah. I'm breaking, <laughs> barely breaking a sweat. Just looking. Got my ear, earphones on. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Right I on. mean, so yeah, it's good to talk, and I think. I'd love to check in with you in another month just to see what's going on. If there's anything groundbreaking on the on the legislature, we should absolutely do another talk talk like this. Well, it'll be interesting to see also next year um, is you know, the Federal Reserve paused interest rate hike, right? And then market immediately responded. So ridiculous. Uh, none of it's based on like, you know, actual performance of a company. <laughs> you know, right. God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, um you know, it, it, we'll see if they actually drop interest rates next year. It's just they're, the, they're, the they're, they're talking about potentially what three three drops next year, right? Three quarter yeah, drops. We'll, all of it's so speculative at this point, but we'll see. But be, be, whenever it's time for that to make that decision, and they announce, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. How, we know what happens, and, uh, right? How yeah. how housing will respond to all that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like we already talked about, there's still this problem of not enough homes, and more that's not going away. You're right going away so interest rate may go down that's great but pricing was still well i don't see how prices will will, will go down you know but at least your monthly cost of service and debt will be lower so yeah all right scott i have a great scenario you don't have to answer this right now <clears throat> what if i bought a house over in palo alto make and sure it's like you know at 4 20 p.m i have to be at best buy to pick up a laptop that Okay. I had to replace the one that broke. This, this is a good seed. This is a good. Seat. I actually have to buy a laptop for my son who's in Chico right now. So, positing this idea, I want to buy, use the VA loan to buy a property in Palo Alto. Million, yes. two million, three million. A third acre is what I'm looking for. I don't care about the yeah. house. It could be a piece yep. of crap ready to burn down. Get my brothers over in New York to burn it down. You know, no questions asked. By the way, that's a, a Navy story. I had a guy drive his truck that he didn't uh, couldn't afford anymore, didn't want, drove it down to Tijuana, and thought it put it drove nice. it down somewhere. And and, and uh, knock on his door a week later, the police found it, thinking he was going to be so excited that hey, we found your truck, man. He was so pissed off. He was already working on the insurance paperwork. He wanted a different vehicle. Yeah, you know, typical military guy, right? Thinking he's found a way to get rid of the truck. And no. down in Mexico, found it, brought it back to his house. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I digress. But maybe no, 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 there. exactly. It's the same. Well, it's, I mean, not the, not the unethical, illegal stuff, but yeah, <laughs> ter 
tear it down and then put like a McMansion on there, like a 10,000, 12,000 square foot house that I could sell for like $20 million. Is that possible with the VA loan? So there, there is, I have not done any con VA construction stuff, but you're, you're, you're talking about a possibility because there is construction with VA. I haven't done any. Um, what those guidelines are and how much equity you have to be and have in that property and all that would, would be, have to be figured out. But I think you probably could do it. Um, the benefit of the VA, of course, is going to be cheaper, cheaper pricing, right? Yeah. Better overall loan. Um, I just don't know all the criteria on it, but uh, I wouldn't tell them that you were buying it to burn it down. I would keep that silent. That you're burn it down. It. Put yeah. it to be clear, Vito. Even that a government loan that, and everything, you know. <laughs> once you build that mansion, you will be disliked by yeah. every neighbor on your street. Not in Palo Alto. That's where all they're all. That's where all the oh, money oh, is, right? Oh. Yes. You might bring the, the values up even more. They might help you build it, you know? Yeah, they might, like, help me plant. So Give advice. Uh, I was just yeah. throwing that idea out there. I'm like, look, at, and I'm looking. I'm like, ah, you know, what if, what if I could do that? How much would it cost me? Do I have to make monthly payments because I don't want to make monthly payments? And how do, how do I make this thing a, a thing? And, I mean, how yeah. much money do I – what am I going to have to come up with all in? Because I'm like the crotchety old neighbor then, I guess, when the, yeah. the dude next door knocks down his house and builds his – Big mansion. I'll be like, you mother lover. What yeah, you can move anytime you want, right? That's the glory of the United States. We're a capitalist society. Well, that's what BlackRock would say, wouldn't they? <laughs> that's right. How to you, well, like you you could have been in an episode of, of uh Ozark, man. I could I could can you see him in Ozark at that at that McMansion down there in Mexico? Right, That's right. That's with with right. Uh, the the uh, was it Saint Bernards or uh, Dobermans, and uh, you know you got that 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 look, man. Would he be a henchman or would he be like an assassin? I know. What do you mean exactly? Like, uh, uh, like no, a, no, would no. he be like a look? He'd be the guy that's movie. trying to break break out. You know, he wants to he wants to turn his life around, and he's just trying to figure out the right way to do it because he's, he's a made man. And, and, you know, once you're in, you're in, right. It's hard oh, to get that's out. Good. That's, I thought yeah. you said you're, you're like, I'm looking at you, man. You just look like somebody needs to turn their life around. You just look like you got <laughs> no, that I'm just trying to, so I'm not saying you're, you're just an assassin in at, at taking on that role. I can see you in there being uh, in that, in that show, man. You got that look, man. I like it. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you know what happens to those guys that want to break out, right? They get whacked. Yeah. yeah. That's why. The Italian. Yeah. Hey, Scott, like, you better go to Best Buy and pick up that, that computer. Yeah. Yeah. That laptop that, uh, you know, uh, they have sell you all the extra memory you now need. And this, you know what? I'll do before I go, just to, don't you don't just buy the extended warranty. Computer? Don't you just hate buying a new computer, though? Uh, yeah. First of all, they have to get all the bloatware off. I have them do that. But then, you, they got a new iOS. Nothing works the way you used to get got used to it. It takes time to acclimate. I know there's worse things in life, but I am dreading that part of it this weekend, trying to figure out how to get everything working again on the laptop so that I can use it functionally next week. But anyway. Just do it slowly. My I gave my son my 2016 MacBook. Yeah. And within six months, it was destroyed because, you know, yeah. he's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> It was a, a the monitor cable for the laptop where it goes like this right there at that little hinge. There's a ribbon cable that goes from oh, yeah. the to the monitor. Well, this particular kind of MacBook can't just replace the freaking ribbon, which would be like a hundred bucks. No, you have to replace the entire screen. The entire screen, five hundred seventy five dollars for two hundred two thousand sixteen computers. So yeah, there you go. That on top of the labor, on top of what. Six, six, seven hundred bucks. I might as well buy him a little MacBook Air and have yeah. it brand new. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this was a pleasure. I got a lot out of it. I hope hope we all did. And I hope our audience did. And uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you for having yeah. me on. Absolutely. Yeah, Scott, it was great meeting you, man. I'm hoping to, 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 I'll reach out to you here. Yeah, we'll reach out. I'd Thanks. like to uh, get together, grab lunch, uh, minus Vito. That'd be fun. And um, no, I'm too, we could, Vito could be there. Vito could be there. Probably not. He'll, he'll, uh, he'll have some marine humor he can throw in, pepper in here and there, you know. Right. So we're, we're all going to get together here next year. There's a there's a whole slot of different 
classes that we're doing at San Jose State. And uh, Scott, you oh, got yeah. invited into this, right? Have you been? Uh, have you talked to Kimberly yet? Mm -mm. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Maybe I need another invite. Send it out. Let me we're doing. Anyway. We're like Bob Davis. I don't know if you met met him, but he's mm -hmm. he's working on the alumni network now, and we're yeah. we're doing this idea of financial intelligence. Oh. Yeah. For the veterans, but now it's being expanded out to the the alumni network. That's awesome. So we're, we're supporting that, and we're also going to go to students and faculty next. <clears throat> Let's and be champions of education. That's how people get helped. Is we've got to give them the knowledge. We've got to, and, and it's so easy to do. And so I love that idea of doing that. I think that's great. That's why we do this every week. We talk about we talk to experts like you to come in and we're not pitching anything, right? We're just talking about ideas and different scenarios and different things and trying to get people intelligent because we're not taught that in school. We're not taught that in home. We're not taught that period. No. And, you know, what have I got to lose? You're, if you call me, great. If not, you're going to call your, your Aunt Betty who sells real estate. I get that. I understand that. But at least right. we've done our part. And that's Absolutely. what this whole thing's about, right? Love it. Love the concept. It's awesome. Yep. All right, Scott. Let you get to it. I appreciate you guys. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of so many of the military comedy shows from the seventies, right there, man. Yeah, Biddy so, Hill. Yeah. <laughs> All right, get That's out of here. Topic. I used to stay up late to to catch any glimpses of Benny Hill I could, man. That was that show. Heck yeah. All the little bikinis and stuff. Heck yeah. Formative years. <laughs> <laughs> Sayonara. Go oh, Army. <laughs> I'm cutting that part out. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're waiting on Scott Wilson. We got one more. I'll, I'll be right back. Go potty. edit this is going to be a beast uh you're going to chop it up into different segments or uh yeah okay cool I'll, i'm just going to chop it up into you know the three different the pieces different and then and drop it into a podcast and then we'll, i'll transcribe it and drop it on the podcast uh, into the blog and then i'm gonna chop and i'll chop um, i got a bunch of stuff i can start have you do you use an app for that yeah i'm using veed I, I paid for it some Veed. Veed, that's editing. So I'm probably going to look for something different now because I think the subscription is going to end soon. I know there's, there's this artificial intelligence tool for video that can use that automatically chops up stuff that I got to look at, that make what, things happen faster. So I just got to. Is it captions? Yeah, it does it all. It does it captions? It does it all. But no, no, no. The, captions dot AI or. Dot oh, AI. As in, it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's called. I, I gotta go look again. I have it saved somewhere. I gotta like go investigate it. Yeah, it we're starting. Like, oh, man, this is faster. Subtitles seven hundred twenty minutes per year. Per how, how do they charge you per month and then charge you? What are you talking about? Veeds? Yeah. No, I I got more than seven hundred twenty. Um, Each video editor. Does it do it for you, or do you have to manually touch it? What do you mean? The Edited. captions? Yeah. The captions are automatic. Uh, I think I'm using the Pro. Um, I think I'm using Pro. And it's, it's, it's okay. It's just... The editing tools aren't all that great, and so I'm just gonna I need to use something different. Yeah, we're looking at buying something like this for the video editing business, so that it does it automatically, but still pretty expensive because by the minute. Yeah, 
I, I got it and the, just to try to, to start using something. And then now as I'm, I've used it for a while now, I'm like, you know what? I think, I think there's something better I can use. Yeah. Well, I'll let you know what we use. Yeah, that will be good. I'm so hungry. I've been You're doing so my... Hungry. What's up? Hey, I was I was commenting last time when you stepped away, Matt. There's this fantastic podcast, uh, Martyr Made. Um, I don't know if you go for runs or go for hikes or you like to listen to the podcast. They're just, they're long form though, right? They're like three hour, you know. So, it, you know, I got I got this to it in chunks, but he's got a, a he's got a great one. His first series was on the whole Palestine and Israeli conflict. Like the, the the roots of it, it was like wow. It was really he went into the history. It was really good. But anyways, this one in particular was about the that coal mine strike in the uh, early 1900s, and he goes into the whole history of it and you know how 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 it went down and, and the violence and how organized those dudes got. Man, a lot of these guys were World War One vets and, and they got you know they were like organized brigades and take, getting ready to take action. And it was pretty impressive, man, how that all shaped up and what they were able to accomplish it got crushed eventually of course but uh i just didn't know about how, how much violence was involved in all that how bloody it was they had some bloody bastards hey, what's the name of the podcast uh martyr made m-a-r-t-y-r-m-a-d-e daryl cooper i don't agree with the guy on some stuff but uh but uh but his podcasts are great he, that like that first series on the uh that's when i first then he did he did one on the uh and the pogroms or in Ukraine, like what the Jews went through and what the Ukrainians went through, through when they starved them back in the day to when the Russians uh, did all that. Dude, talk about some crazy history, man. So brutal. It was hard to listen to when he got into the details about how, how bad it got. He did another one on, on uh, Jonestown, the, the guy who, who uh, you know, did all that. Fascinating history there too, man. He went to like how it, how he first started there in the Bay Area. Even you know he had a little place there in the Bay Area. He started out in L.A. And how it uh, how it led to what it led to. It's pretty good though. Crazy that you can get caught up in that kind of stuff, huh? Yeah, man, it's pretty nuts. Anywho, uh, well, any word from Mark? What time did he say he was coming on? He said three thirty. Shoot. Because at about five is like a kind of like a hard stop. Well, we're good. Uh, I like Scott, the, the the lender. He, he seemed like a good dude. Um, I was hoping to hear he, he did he he lended outside of the state too, but that, that's cool. It's all good. California's good too. I have guys that can do outside of the state. I need veteran though. I need veteran. Yeah. I need a veteran. Yeah. So I'm really I'm really growing a campaign and a website to, to really go out to target audience of people who are. Uh, veterans or veteran veteran self-employed or small business owners is really the uh the target market so i want i just i want to try to use an ecosystem of people who are veterans as possible when they need something too right like a lender real estate you know all those things i'm mean, having yeah. trouble finding is, is a tax person i just have not been able to find somebody and not just because they're a veteran and they do something doesn't mean that i want to work with them either um but i haven't been even be able to like just start a conversation with somebody who's a veteran and is, um, uh, you know, a tax person, whether a CPA or a accountant or something. It's you know? kind of hard to find people that do that. I think there's one that Bob's working with. Yeah. And they're going to come talk one, one or two. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> they're they're going to come talk. So as soon as I meet them, we'll, cool. we'll do that. But I mean, I want people that are like that are present that can be present on the on the video, but also that have decent ethics too. Yeah, that's that's. What I mean, just because they're a veteran and they do something doesn't mean I want to work with them. Like that has to be more to it, right? Um, than that they got to check a lot of boxes, and uh, 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 but I just been it's, I've been having a challenge finding folks who are even just veterans, which is surprising to me. Um, yeah. Anywho, uh, oh, I was going to ask you, are you available for a recording next Wednesday? Not Christmas? No, Christmas is next uh, Sunday or Monday? Yeah, um, next Wednesday, 
about the same time? Yeah, like around two o'clock. Yeah. I have this, uh, she's a Allison Bechtel Clark. Her husband, her husband's actually a great guy. He, he owns a, a small like, like, electrical, electrical contractor there in San Jose area. Awesome guy. You, 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 you'd like him. He's really good too. Um, and then she's, she used to do real estate for some, quite some time out in Phoenix. Uh, but now she, she's not doing that anymore. Um, and she's a, uh, 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 a coach basically. And, and I, I've, I've done her stuff. I don't went through her courses and I just found it super beneficial. And she, she does a great piece on, uh, on, um, kind of business planning for business owners or people self-employed and like how to think about it from a financial point of view. Which uh, I think would be really, really cool, cool subject. Yeah, let's get her on. Cool. I'm looking at her right now on Facebook. She has a dog and five kids. Yeah, so they got a big family, man. They got a lot going on. But super ethical, super, super. She's a tough coach, man. She, she, she keeps you kind of. Hey, look at this. But it's, they're good people. She used to be a competitive swimmer back in the day, as they say. The big yeah. void of nothingness. Oh, the Scott? There's a Scott, yeah. Oh, well, there he is. Oh, he showed up for a second. Dude, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I can tell, man. You're like, fuck, I need to eat. I can't stop eating, Scott. Nice to see you, man. <laughs> oh, he's going to have the same problem as uh, the other Scott did. Why? Because I'm not hearing him. He was talking about I don't see. So, Scott, down at the bottom, there's a mute button, the microphone, you and you're frozen. you're frozen up. There's a little upward button, a little upward arrow that can get you your audio. Dee, dee, dee. You could probably do your fu- uh, your phone too. I don't see any bald spots. So Scott's also army. Outstanding. Then Scott, you get some pressure here for you to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how the the crayon eating marine knows all this technology, huh? Can you hear me? Okay. If you can hear me, there's a little microphone button on the bottom. There's and to the right, there's an arrow. Click that, and then you can. There's microphone and speaker. Nothing yet. No pressure, Army. <laughs> pressure, Army. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the whole Department of the Navy on with me this afternoon, and it's kind of over it. We have hours of footage. Uh, were you on the phone with him? No. I am oh. calling both of us now. I think he can hear us now. And you tried that lower, you tried that you got, uh, arrow next to the microphone. Can you hear us now? He can hear us. But we can't hear him. 
Yeah, I'm gonna say, and you try that little arrow next to the microphone where it says mute. If you, there's a little drop down menu there, and you can toggle your audio input and output. I've noticed that be a consistent challenge. I know even for me, I had to make sure I go back there and the right audio inputs and outputs are selected for me. Are you on an iPad or just a like a Chrome pad? Heard something. I'm doing the same thing on my phone to see if I can get it on my phone. Huh, look at that. Say something. Something. It was Say it again. Testing, testing, one, two. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what? I can't hear you if you're talking. Works great on Safari. Oh, you're playing. <laughs> but he's, oh, I don't think he's on anymore, though. Well, he'll jump on. Ah. Hey, do, hey, do, diddly, bop, bop. I wish I was back on the block, block. Hey, some cadence calling there. What the hell? With my rifle in my hand. I'm, I'm going to be a, be a button man. I'll be a supply clerk, man. I was, uh, I went to a school, uh, it was a joint school. Oh, gosh, this is like 20 years ago now. And there was a uh, Air Force sergeant there who was former Marine Corps. And he was a drill sergeant, too, I think. Of all, of all things, he was not, but now he was an Air National Guard guy. Uh, he's a cop, actually, out of Tennessee. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, I just, I had never been around or served with Marines at that point, and so uh, we had to go do something. And he called Cadence for us. And I was like, "Oh, Marines do it different." <laughs> like the 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 uh, the tempo was just, it was different. It was it, I wasn't ready for it. We we had to, we had to double time someone real quick, and he he called Cadence, and I was like, "What the hell? That's different. I don't understand." You can say, uh, "How does it go, baby shark? Do 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 do, baby shark." <laughs> Did you see that TikTok? No, <laughs> they had some TikTok. They had some drill sergeant singing Cadence, and they had the whole platoon doing baby Is shark. Right? That's funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. I can call some cadence though. I can call me some cadence. Yeah. 
army cadence. It's nothing like Marine Corps cadence. All right, hey, Marine Corps. army, where are you going? Get you in your text and follow me. There is nothing like. I am Marine Corps Infantry. I did yeah, that they, in that's it right there. The way you said it right there. That, that's like that's a little, that's like a Marine thing. Yeah. A little Nothing small with the eye. Left, right. Left, right. <laughs> left, right, left. I just, re just remember the, 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 that those dainty little callers uh, beat Navy uh, Saturday. Doesn't matter. It's because we had squids <laughs> running the show, right? That's how they sounded when they called the play, too. They said shotgun. Said, hey, oh, shotgun, <laughs> left, right, off, right, off, right. See, yeah. So I'm also I'm also building a uh, commercial insurance site in partnership with actually Taylor. So I'll actually start working with Taylor more and uh, getting the commercial insurance license. I won't like specialize in that, but I'll partner and have him do that. And it's going to be strictly strictly targeting veteran owned business owners. Right on. That's all I want to go after work with so we'll see so how that goes that's good because you should get them talking to john or him talking to john because he yeah. does commercial loans right yeah until i find somebody who is a veteran and does what john does until then john will be the guy yeah john's down with the bad achilles hill he had that repaired this last week oh Ouch. um i'm thinking we're gonna not talk with homeboy he's coming on Um, remember that insurance adjuster guy? Yeah. I, I like what he does. Hell yeah. I think it's phenomenal, um, stuff I'm putting, I got like three clips I want to put out for him in the next three weeks, three, four weeks. Yeah. Um, nobody's heard of that stuff. Like, right. It's like, a just unheard of. When he was talking, I was like, who are you? What is this stuff? You are talking magic in my ear. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I, you know, it's like I, I saw another one of his tech talks. He's like, if you're a real estate guy or an insurance guy and you want to do this, let me know. Blah, blah, blah. Or financial advisor. I'm like. Yeah. I mean, why not set up a lead gen site for that and talk about it? And then. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to go out and jump on roofs or anything, but. Yeah, not this guy. If I can, if I can send people over there and argue it, I feel like so I was on a, a, that reminds me, speaking of Legion and all that stuff, I was on a, did I ever tell you, did I, did I ever show Star Steak to you? Who, what? Star Steak, does that sound familiar to you? So it's this incredible piece of technology that I've been following for the last two and a half years. They were supposed to launch like a year ago, but delayed, 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 delayed. And their whole thing is, 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 um, and they started to get some, like they, they, they just barely got their beta version out yesterday. Like it was finally open. And their whole thing is, is allowing a creator or performer, or an artist, whatever you do, whatever, if you have an audience, if you have fans, if you have people who follow you, they're giving you a platform so you can own your audience. In other words, there's nobody in between you. And you know an algorithm or uh, you know uh, whoever it might be, and so they're giving you a way to, to do. It. And I'm not I'm not giving it any kind of justice on how it works because I can't. It's not really my thing. I don't know. Like it's not that's not my world. But uh, it looks super lucrative for people whose world that is because you can be an agent on that platform and onboard these folks, um, and you get paid a percentage to to, to do all that. And it's all really new. They haven't started marketing yet, but they're going to start marketing. I think that they already got they got some folks lined up to join their platform, and we'll see. I mean, I'm following it. We'll see what happens with it. Um, I might try to get one of those guys on to speak to uh, the opportunity there for those who maybe want to be into it, who are into that, because you can make some money. You can make a lot of really good money um, as an opportunity to make money. Him so and then uh, I want to. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody from uh, Wealth Space that dude Tom Lee we had a we had dinner with. 
remember Sil, Tom, they took us to their little meeting at the at the house, all the Filipino food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The scrumptious Filipino food. I could yeah. I, got, yeah. I walked away like in pain. I was so full. <laughs> Same. Anyways, uh, on their franchise opportunity that they're working out, I'm, I'm waiting to have some they're supposed to get me somebody who can talk to us about that, how that all that works. For those who people want to open a franchise with Walmart. So that could be a cool opportunity too. Do you have do you have um a website slash CRM slash drip campaign manager. No, any of that stuff, man. I'm still, I'm barely still building a website right now. I got somebody. Um, but, but I'm, I pay for go high level. Let me get it for you real quick. I'll show it to you. I have the square page, square space thing that. I'm paying for that. I've done nothing with. Yeah. <clears throat> what is this? Go high level is a multifaceted marketing center for you. You can do, this is it. This is my video company, mm -hmm. but let's say that uh, for real estate, I want to have a, a database. I have all my database here. I don't, but I do. Actually, I can go to. So is this is this a CRM thing or what? I don't. I it's don't everything. Quite. Let me show you. So I have all these people that are contacts, right? I have many, many more, like twenty sets of these people. I have uh, drip campaigns that I can do, manual conversations that I can send out to people. I can do workflow, which is like a, a drip campaign, email, text. Phone drop, voicemail drop, and yeah, that kind of stuff. And you can set it up so that automatically, like a lead comes in for whatever your financial thing, and it comes in and you set it up so that you can send out six months worth of email, texts, and drip, voicemail, whatever. Yeah, I, I got to build all that stuff out, man. Right. But what I'm saying is I can offer this to you, an account for you for free. What? Get only, out of town. So, and it has, and it has, uh, well, opportunities. This is a, 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 like, let's say you, these are all the brand new leads. And then you move, you have a conversation with Kevin. So you move them over to hot lead or dead or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then if there's like a payment set up, like a Stripe where they have to pay you something, you can set that up. And then there's. Uh, social planner so that you can send it out to like Facebook and IG and all that. And then email campaigns, like let's say you want to do like a, a, one single email blast saying, Hey, happy. Oh, so, so you can, you can do the, you, I wouldn't, because I got MailChimp right now. I wouldn't yeah. need to do that because it's all in one place right here. Yep. So the only difference is there's, there's a limit of how many emails you can send out every month. And if you're going to do the text and voicemail drop, it's like, super freaking cheap per per text that goes out it's like less than a cent per whatever i don't know how that goes and then automation those, those are the workflows that i was telling you about the drip campaigns so my team has built those out and then you have a website we don't have one set up right now because we're just kind of goofing around with it i'm paying 300 bucks a month for this wow but all my clients get it all my video ease clients get it. So I'm completely okay with you using it. Dude, that'd be super sweet of you. I, and then I have, so <clears throat> what I, the one thing I do want to sell as a sponsorship is if you're a small business and you're struggling to create a marketing website, all this other stuff, have a commercial, whatever. That's what I want to sell because I have a free site that you can use. <clears throat> For the people that are not friends, I'm going to charge them like 25, 50 bucks a month, right? But then here's the here's the kicker. How many people do you know that actually touch their database every day? Right? I know a lot of people with a database, like what, the, what they do with it, God only knows. Right. Do they touch it every day? Because in order for know. a CRM to pay off, you have to touch it every day. Well, what if I could do that for you, where we have things that are done every day for your site, 
for your emails, for your things. And let's say a lead comes through and we send you a text saying, hey, Jimmy John just said here was information. He wanted more information about this. And then we put him on a, on a lead funnel for you or what have you. So, and then, so what if we could do all that CRM management for you? That's the business I'm creating with this. This is the now. This is the real estate thing you were talking. You were talking about, right? The real estate stack, like the right. So we have the t client template account right here. So this is By the all way, we get Wayne on to talk about the that whole opportunity because it's it's just a huge huge opportunity to talk about there. Right. So we're creating a template for real estate, and why I want you to do it, and why I want to give it to you for free is because we're going to create that, help you create it. We'll help you manage it for a couple months and then we'll create that as something that we can offer financial advisors. <laughs> See? Yeah. So, and, then, and then you can send this out to all your friends, say, hey, my buddy Vito is doing this. It's really freaking cheap and it's amazing. And I get a little vig out of that. Or you get a little vig out of that, right? And that's the whole thing. It's like I, the video <laughs> editing is going to go to the way of the dodo birds and AI. And um, I think what I need to figure out is like, I'm, I'm still getting, I just, I just talked to this lady's gonna help me out with the website to like build it. Um, I need to figure out that front end. So this is like the back end right here. So I can no, hear it. It, it comes with a website. What do you mean? It comes with the website. It comes with its own website. What? What? Wait. Dude, okay, this is, the, I, I made this for him. It took me an hour of fucking around and downloading pool pictures. By the way, I use, I took them all from, from Canva. And it's not fancy. It's just a standard website. And then we're going to redo all these photos for him. <clears throat> and we'll have any, your people that work for you, right? And testimonials and your logo and uh, blog. There's a blog in there. There's your phone directly and then all that other stuff. And then all that lead stuff that gets funneled into this so that it's all one intricate site. People are charging a thousand dollars a month for something like this that's completely integrated. I only want to charge 250 a month for a fully integrated, fully managed website slash lead gen slash blah, blah, blah. The key to that is we'll set something up every month for you, a lead funnel, update your website. We'll have two hours extra included in that 250 a month so that we do something custom for you, right? <clears throat> and here's the real, my, my thing is, I don't want to touch my CRM. I don't want to touch my website. I don't want to touch anything. I want my people to do it for me. And if I can get other people to pay for this, then I'm gold. Mm -hmm. And we become a service. This, this shouldn't be Wayne's pool world. Wayne is, we call it Wayne's world, <laughs> but we're supposed to say it's PFS pool services. I don't know what it's called, but the whole idea is to create something that's, valuable and done and it's part of the service and i want to do lawyers i want to do contractors i want to do anybody i want to have all this stuff kind of laid out and then let's say that we go for an entire year with you every other month we create one lead funnel for you which is templated that we figure it out because with you you're going to help us template it and then we'll have the word, the word um, things done. And then that's where we'll make a little bit of money. We'll make money from, hey, can you customize the uh, the drip campaign for uh, the veteran business thing, right? And then we'll we would charge for that, but because you're helping us figure this out, we'll we'll do it for free. Well, I wouldn't know what to say, man. It seems like it's such a daunting thing to put together. But we so, do it one, one thing at a time. That's the whole thing. No, gotcha. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's the way to do it, right? Because it's, it's been so daunting to me because I was like, man, where do I even start with all this? I got to figure this all out. 
What are you allowed to say? What don't you want to say? What's what works? What doesn't? Um, right. So is this go high level is the service you've paid for and now you're just adding on to it to be able to, I guess I don't understand. I'm not quite sure exactly how go high level is a platform that you're leveraging to build more stuff on. So you're like go high level is a, a tool. You're acting like a, basically like a, a manager or agency, right? Okay. I'm, this, is my, this is the platform I'm using. Let me manage your or provide tools so you you can run your business, or market your business and CRM through through it. Correct. Got it. Uh, so you don't own, own Go High Level, but you know the tools, so you you're like a, a agent or manager of Go High Level on on Go High Level's platform, so you can onboard clients and then you know run run their business. Correct. There's Got hundreds it. of thousands of agencies that are doing this, but they're not offering the service part. Got it. Right. And it's it offers all of this stuff. So if you did all of this stuff together, it wouldn't be seven thousand, but we could do the the op the white label, but you also get an app so you can have it on your phone, just so you know. I mean, do this thing's just freaking tits. And there's a there's a competitor to it, it's great, but I figure I'm spending three hundred bucks a month. My intention is to give a basic account, one lead funnel, and allow people to put import their CRM for my clients, my video ease clients to make my service more sticky. So that they start using it and they have lead funnel links that they can use so that when they do a video, we put it on their, on their description inside their video, free relocation report to Cucamonga, Tennessee. Yeah. Boom. And then it goes into the system and it does it automatically or free financial checklist checkup uh, for, you know, Patrick, financial advisor. Whatever it is. Whatever your company is, right? And the whole idea is give you something basic because you're sitting on Wix, which is basic, right? It's the same thing here. It's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. It's plug and play. You could manipulate it or you can have us do it. How much are you charging your lady or how much is your lady charging you? And we just started talking. And I was like, hey, man, I need somebody to set up my website because like I don't know what I'm doing and I don't have the time really. Um, she's like, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll set, set up for you. Uh, so we're supposed to talk like next week. Um, we'll find out because I'm interested how much she's going to charge. I will. Because I'm going to introduce you. Sorry. What am I doing here? Just copy. This might take a couple of weeks, just so you know. Oh, I, I, you know how long I paid for that four square page? About a year ago. <laughs> how much does that cost you? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. It wasn't, I want, I want to say, you know, it, it doesn't come with much. It's just, it's kind of like a Canva thing, really. Yeah. And it, you, you know, like it, you can build it on there, but like if you want to do, to do more stuff, you got to pay more. I, I don't think I paid for everything. I paid for like the basic. You know, I was like, you know what, I don't know what, you know what the hell I'm doing here. Let me just get the basic for now. Yeah. So like in Canva, you can have the free account. And you'd be like, hey, Vito, can you get me this picture right here on the website? And it might be like paid for. I, I have the pro version of Canva. So if you want that, let me know. If you want. No, I got that. 
that's not a problem. Thank you, though. Yeah. Uh, it's just like my mind for the technical part of building the website with the funnel and the links. And it's just like, oh, it just seems so freaking time consuming. Yeah, yeah it is. It's a pain in the ass. But my guy can, he, he digs into this and he's like, this is what we need to do. I'm going to do it like this. I want to do, I'm like, yeah, you go, my son. You go. <laughs> Sounds right to me. <laughs> because I give him, I give him a profit share every month. Whatever profit we have left over, he gets a huge ass portion of it. Nice. Yeah. So he's motivated. I'm funding his success, right? And I'm just a salesman. And we could do that with insurance. We could do that with Taylor. We can do that. He's a like an insurance broker, guys. I'm happy to do it as long as we can figure out if if you're willing to help me build out a template and then we can shift on it. And then you can go off and sell it. Sure. I mean, I'd refer whoever I can, man. I mean, you got to know like hundreds of thousands of people that are in financial advising. FA. Yeah, but, you know, it's not like we... Uh... Financial services. Yes, I, I do know people. I, I would think this would just be great for anybody who has, who has like a... Who's in sales. Here. Small business. Yeah. <gasps> Wait, hey, Vito, can I, can I offer a small business template for free as a value add? The fuck yeah, you can. Uh, well, I said my target audience is gonna is people who are self employed or have small business. All those people are in sales, right? So this would be like something they could totally use. I mean, it's a value add to them. And how much more does it cost me? It cost me five minutes of somebody going create another account, save. Yeah. So I guess the the, the intention would be. Let me back up. So what you're offering to that person is access to the site. But what does that really do for you? It doesn't cost you anything, but how does it make you any money? When they need questions answered, they need custom things done. Oh, I see. Like, hey, yeah, you have access. Now, if you really want to, if you want to run it with uh, Unleaded, or, or you, can run it, you can run this site with Unleaded Fuel, or you can run it with Jet Fuel. Right. Right. You can have one link, one one free link. You can have as many emails as you want. I don't care because I'm going to charge you after however many emails. You get the basic website and that's it. There's there's one workflow, but it's like two weeks. That's it. That that's that's it. And then if you want us to add to the workflow, we can't the lead drip. Right. If you want us to add to your website, we can. If you want us to add, or you could get on a monthly thing where we supercharge your website, the whole service. Yeah. And we add that, or we go to the pro account like this. Right. You know SaaS. Right. You get the free account. You get the basic for eighteen. You get the pro for thirty. Except for you put a zero on the back of that, and you get the business, the high end. We concierge. We do everything for you. By the way, it's all done for you. Don't worry about it. And that's that's that was the mindset behind this. The thing about Veed is it's all done, so the computers do everything for you with a CRM, with a website, with drip campaigns. It all has to be done by humans for now. So that's that's what I'm banking on. Let let us do that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with dick with it because you probably wanted to start a website two years ago, three years ago. And yeah. you finally said, I'm going to put, spend three or four hundred dollars on a website. And then you're still in December and you haven't done anything. No. I could tell you that that's how you do it, because I've done that a thousand times. <laughs> so this lady is like, finally, I was like, yeah, you know what? Just you do it. Like. I don't want you know, I just need I don't need to be perfect. I just needed to start it so I could start building the funnel and all that, all the stuff. I've been waiting or dicking around with this thing for like a year. So. Yeah. Um, I want to say she was, we talked about like 250. 250? Yeah, but I think in her mind, she thinks she, she, she wants to put me like on a retainer. Hmm. I'll put her on a retainer so that she can keep building it and adding on to it and doing more stuff. But I was like, I, I, where I was just, I, was like, I just needed to be open for business. And, you know, six months later, maybe we'll look at doing some other stuff. I just want to publish something. Well, dude. The next couple of days you'll have a free account. You don't have to dick around with it. 
But do find out how much she's charging. Find out what it is. If you can send us her proposal or whatever. Because I, I can almost guarantee you it's basically the same service. But, you know. Well, she's not offering, like, all this other stuff. She's just going to, like, ask for my password and stuff to the website and build it. Like, design it. That's all she's going to do. She's just going to design the website. That's all she was trying to That's all she, she's not doing all the other stuff. You know? Yeah. And you know how you have... Uh, you charged us like five thousand dollars for your the big plan, the Huda Hada. The Huda If you do yeah. that, you can do it by credit card on there. We can set you up with a credit card, uh, merchant account. You can do everything, man. Freaking things balls them. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do with this thing. Nice. I've never yeah, I've never heard of them. Um, yeah. They're not perfect, but I mean, how much do you spend a month on MailChimp? It's not much. It's like 25 like, bucks a month or something if that much 15 to 20 bucks like that which i, I you know i don't even use it that often um to warrant it but uh this coming year i want i want to start using it more and um what if i could do all the all the email blasts for you i could do a monthly email blast for you how much you willing for somebody to do that right yeah, i mean uh, it's huge if we hey, could create, what happened to, uh scott did he uh call i think you he bailed i think he bailed. God damn, it was the army guy, of course. <laughs> uh, nothing against army. I love army. We need army. God damn. I wanted to talk to him, too, because I've been looking for also the tax guy and a family lawyer guy who's uh, a veteran. Like, man, that, so you're hitting both, uh, hitting two, or, or the loan guy, I should say. So that's two out of the three I'm looking for today. Um, hopefully we get Scott back on another time, I guess. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, you got to go, right? Because you got... Yeah. I got Dude. Kids. We spent the afternoon together. How romantic. Good Lord. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Good stuff. Um, right. Shoot, I don't know. Well, you, you're going to chop them, though, right? Because I was like, man, if you send them to me, it might take me for like three days to upload it to where I can start cutting it up. Yeah, too, it's uh, going to take a little bit to process. I'll probably get to it tomorrow morning to do the. I'm editing. not in a hurry to get it. I'm just saying. It, I'm trying to think about it. It's not going to be produced, and I'll just cut cut it to the two different pieces, uh, that like one hour or whatever, and then oh, I'll wait. send those to you so you can have them. Is it? Too, yeah, is it right. The piece were just uh, just you and me, and then there's a piece with um, Scott. Scott. Right. I keep thinking there's three pieces, but no, it's just the two. Okay. All right. Awesome, man. And then next Wednesday. I'll yeah. Put it on my calendar. Yeah, I will do that. All right, man. Have a great night. Arriba Derchi.